They think there ain't no way to Christians party Before our king gon' me we're quick to party Be Christians party Yeah, they said that Christians don't want to be Elect, Y'all boys tag team on this one Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you may find yourself as you listen to this. And welcome to the podcast where if you aren't connected by now, you got to get plugged in, baby. Turn you tune into another hard. episode of It's a Black and White Thing. I am your host, A1. I go by Carlos Johnson. You can also call me Dan. You can check out every episode of It's a Black and White Thing by going to the podcast app of your choice. We are there. Just search Brains and Bars. Also, you can go to YouTube, search Brains and Bars, and find the platform there. We are growing. Um, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell thing so you can be in tune with all the latest content from the platform. Um, also, you can follow us by going to uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, search at Brains and Bars. Find us, like us there, follow us there, and be in tune and holler at us. We're not, we're not, we're not, we don't bite. We cool people out here. So as always with this special episode, I got riding shotgun with me. I got the homie Dre Senior. What's going on, man? What's happening, boys? Dre Senior. My mama called me Dre. My wife called my mama called me Andre. My wife called me Andre. Y'all call me Dre. What's good? Yep, yep. And then as usual with these special episodes, the homie DJ Trey in the building was good. What's good, world? Your boy DJ Trey. I currently have a kid down here that is uh half naked wants a, a fruit snack, but y'all can't see that. So <laughs> thank God for the meat button. Let's go. Yeah, thank you for that visual. We appreciate it. We appreciate that. Right. Oh yo, my three year my three year old be wildin', bro. He don't care. Hold on. And he's gonna give us a picture. Oh he's gonna show us the the <laughs> the bucky <laughs> uh, listen I listen uh, I'm on daddy do it happens bro it happens it does it does. But, yo, also joining us tonight, we have two special guests in the building. First off, I want to start with uh, the homie Chef Dev. Chef Dev, how you doing this evening, man? What's up, Brody? What's up, man? Thanks for having us on, dog. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also joining us tonight, man, fresh off, fresh off work, man, you know what I'm saying? Able to join us, it's the homie Jay Blast. Jay Blast, what's good, yo? What it do, man? Shoot, man. Smelling like oil sheen, you know what I'm saying? But it's all good. <laughs> That's what's up. You still got the tape on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So, as you know, here in Kansas City, if you are in tune at all, you know, we've been having uh, a couple of battles here in the city, hits battles. Um, and so, this past weekend, we had the latest installation of that on Praise 95.3 FM. Um, it was subtitled, If He Dies, He Dies. It was between Dre Sr. and Jay Blast. And so we're here to recap that, go talk about that battle, get into some conversations about the music, behind the music, life, all that good stuff. And so with that being said, I, first I want to start with, with, the, with the moderator, with the host, with Chef Dev. Um, so Chef, like, how long has uh, Praise 95.3 been, been on, on the air? Uh, it's been on six years. Uh, it's come March, uh, March this past seven March seventeenth. Six years, man. Praise God. It's been. Uh, yes, sir. So, what was what was the inspiration between behind starting uh, Praise ninety five point three? I'll give you the short, short version. Uh, man, always been in the music. Always been in the media. Um, the inspiration for going to college for radio was um, it was hard to get radio play. I said I'm gonna get my radio DJ. Uh, uh, not certificate, but go to college and, and get a degree. And when I get to a radio station, I can play my own music. Uh, fast forward, I got it, got in the radio, found out you can't play your own music. Uh, you got to play with <laughs> um, it's a conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then basically, man, the Lord saved me, uh, started using my talents for good. And uh, just awkward situations always kept me looking for my own land. So um, self-sustainability, to put it in one, one phrase, is the reason that I started Praise 95. Self-sustainability in media is what yeah. that's what I want it to be in. So That's what's up. That's what's up. So you are the, in our area and in this genre, right, you are the, 
uh, I don't, I don't trying to think of the, the right word here, but you're the innovator, or at least I shouldn't say maybe not innovator is the right word, but you're the first person within the Christian community to put on these kind of kind of battles. Like what what drove you to do that and start that here uh, in our city? Oh, for sure. Um, I, for real, man, it was just a travesty that somebody didn't do it. I mean, with the success and with the creativity of the secular hit battles, you know what I'm saying? I had seen Little John and T-Pain. I didn't have the idea. You know what I'm saying? I seen Teddy Riley and, uh, and Babyface, and my wife had the idea. And I was like, eh. And then I went to sleep and woke up. And I said, well, who would we do? She's like, I don't know. Who would you do? I'm like, I don't know. And then I said, uh, I think uh, she said Pastor 83. And I was like, man, can't even nobody go up against Pastor 83. And then I was like, and I, I think Chris Cobbins had posted a something. I was like, Chris Cobbins. I was like, that's it. And, and it was just boom. Um, and it was just so successful and people really, really gravitated to it. And it was like, yo, I think people want to see this. So let's do it again. Let's keep doing it till um, we can't do it no more. But now we're reaching out and reaching out, trying to get it cracking. So um, it's really, you know, so funny. <laughs> and I'm sure all y'all can probably agree. Like, you know, you get married and you'd be like, yeah, you know, I'm running things. You know what I'm saying? And this is how I'm supposed to be, man. But my, my wife get a lot of credit for stuff, dog. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> I bad. promise you, dog. <laughs> you know, like, even if she come up with something I don't like, I eventually come around to it if she say something. And I'll be like, nah, and I'll be, I'll be yeah, I, I told you so kind of thing. So, yeah. So she, she the brains behind this one. That's what's up. Shout out, shout out, shout out to her. Wife, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Fresh off Mother's Day. Hey, hey, shout out to yeah. Wifey, man. Yes, sir. Um, cool, cool. So with that being said, with that being as our lead in, let's uh let's jump into this, man. It's uh Dre versus JB, J Blast. Um, so first I want to start with uh with J Blast, man. Like, Jay, how long have you have you been doing music? I have been doing music for Shoot, since I was 14, I'm 36, about to be 37. So I've been doing it for a long time, man. But uh, I guess the first CD I was on back in the day, I was uh, yeah, I was a freshman, man. So uh, of course I done wrote a whole bunch of raps, stole some of my brother's raps, Devin, <laughs> and then my cousin Lavelle, and kind of put my own little words and stuff with it. But uh, I had uh, wrote a rap one time and my brother he heard it and i mean I, I i killed all kind of people in that mug i had an ak i've never even seen an ak at that time you know what I'm saying? I, think I, was, <laughs> I, was nice. probably, uh, I think i was in the eighth grade seventh grade seventh grade and uh he was like man he's like hold on man for one your bar is like it's like you wrote it like a story you know what i mean it's like separate your bars first and then get you a dictionary you know what i mean and read the dictionary and build your vocabulary up because it seems like you don't have none you know what i mean you're filling them with cut <laughs> words you know what i mean so yeah i did that and um uh shoot it it, it was it's the best advice he ever could give me as far as you know just starting off being a, a rapper because then I started finding words to be very interested in se instead of using this, man, I can use that. I can use this or I can use this. You know what I mean? So, and that's when I really started getting into, you know, uh, the lyricist part of being a rapper. Cause you have some rappers that are just rappers and then you have some who are lyricists. So yes. uh, I tend to uh, pride myself on being more of a lyricist than a rapper, but yeah. So that's hey, yo. I was 14. Yeah. Shout out to whoever is in your clique that will tell you you trash, right? Like, you need somebody to tell you you yeah. are trash. You can't have and if yes you don't man around. Have, yes man ain't going to get you nowhere. You, can't you know what I mean? You can't do it. Somebody you know? got to tell you. Yeah, yeah. He was like, well, he didn't say you was trash, but now that I'm thinking about it, that's what he said. <laughs> 
he was just like, man, like, come on, man, this is how you do it. And he broke down the bar formations and had a really, I was like, man, that's what's up. Because he was on Razzcast back then, man. Razzcast, I don't know if y'all know. He was a oh, monster. Man. You know what I mean? Razzcast, boy, I was like, Ciano, this dude boy. is yeah. nuts. Yeah. And I started listening to a lot of like Razzcast. I liked it corrupt, you know, coming up, man. And, uh, yeah, so just a lot of lyricism, you know, I, I try to put that into what I do. And I've been doing it for a while. Now, when I got saved at 21, I started, uh, you know, shifting that gift more toward giving, you know, God the glory from it versus, you know, doing it myself. You know, me and my brothers, we used to, uh, we had a secular album, but we had our auntie who was real religious. We had her sing on it, God rest her soul, my auntie Charlotte. And uh, she sung a prayer on it, so we thought we was good. We got the prayer in the beginning, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So now we can cuss you out the rest of the, the way, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we thought we was good. So mm -hmm. I, I guess God was really convicting us even back then when mm -hmm. we didn't even really fully give our life to him, you know what I mean? He, we still tried to acknowledge him, mm -hmm. but still kind of do what we want to do. So we was kind of just like, you know, teeter-tottering at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got so you you guys went on. You have Lifeline Records, right? Lifeline Music. Yes. Um, so who who was the who was the found who was the the founder of that? Is it a collaborative effort between the both of y'all? So yeah, me me and Pierre. So me and Pierre, uh, we rapped. I met him at a church, uh, Nehemiah Center. Shout out to Pastor Allen uh, on Twenty Ninth and Prospect. It's, it's not there anymore, but I met him there along with uh, Marcus. I knew Marcus Slim. Y'all know him, Slim. Yeah, yeah. Way yeah. back in the day. So he kind of, we kind of all uh, hooked up there. And then I knew that Pierre rapped and I was like, man, shoot, uh, let's, let's do some stuff. So we had a couple of tracks, whatever, this before Lifeline. And then we just sounded good together. Uh, uh, my wife, you know, got it in with his wife. I mean, we just, you know, real cool like that, man. So once we was like, man, let's start a label. We both came up with it and, that, that's what it was. He had Sideways 8 records. And I said, what, what is Sideways 8? <laughs> but then if you, if you flip an 8 Sideways, it's Infinity or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when you just too deep, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, let's just keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, who's a lifeline? You know, Jesus Christ, the lifeline. And we use, you know, of course, uh, we communicate what we used to say. We communicate the life through the line of the art form of music. You know what I'm saying? Which Jesus Christ is the lifeline. So that's that's what we do. Dope. Also, also back then, all your labels and names had to have some, you know, good theological. Yeah, it had background. to be juicy. So, yeah, it had to be. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to juice it up. I wanted to add some more stuff, but I couldn't think of, of nothing else. Well, I mean, you could have took curfew. curfew. I mean, that was, that was a lot. That was, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Shout out, shout out to Pierre, man. Shout out to my brother Pierre, man. Or DeAndre yes, Johnson. I don't know how y'all know him. Yes, you know sir. Me? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to Lincoln with uh, Pierre, you know. You used to I work. Play ball in the gym with him. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so was he good, man? I mean, because... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He could hoop. He could hoop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, again. I was like, because I've never been in the gym with him when he was actually serious hooping. You know, he playing around just shooting. But I know he got a scholarship to uh, Rolla mm. uh, to play, too. But I was just like, you just don't look like you can hoop, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people, you know, tall. Like, Carl, I'm like, okay, you, you tall. You probably can hoop. Like, he's not tall or nothing. And, you know, he's light-skinned, you know? I guess they're cool Mitchell. now. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, he had a nice hand. He had a nice hand. Nice. He had a nice hand. Okay, okay. I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> and he can shoot. He can shoot. He had a handle and he can shoot. He was a, ni he was a nice lead guard. Yeah, yeah. But, yo, so I want to jump back to something that you said, and I want to get this from everybody, and then we will. I promise we'll get into the battle. Blast, you mentioned that some of Dev's influ influences was like Raz Cass. So I'm gonna jump back to you, Dev. Like coming up, like who were your influences musically coming up? I, he mentioned Razz Cass. Who else was out there that you looked up to? Man, when I really um 
when I really got into music, we always had music that you listen to. But I remember uh, when I was 14, man, back in what, 91, I was 14, somewhere around there. And uh, I was selling, selling dope and all my little partners were selling dope. And uh, that's when pullouts was real popular. You pull the stereo out and you carry it with mm-hmm. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was on crutches, so I couldn't really, it was hard for me to do it. But, um, so I didn't have a pullout, but I had a, a, a briefcase. And you open it up and it had all the tape slots in it. Mm-hmm. And I was 14 and I mean, I had rows of just tape. Man. Like, I, I remember that. Have the artwork, I gotta have it all nice and neat. And you pop that mug open. I didn't have a pullout, so when I was on my crutches, you see me with my briefcase, and I had all points. <laughs> but really, back then, I was really feeling. Uh, of course, uh, man, I I I rocked Tupacalypse, man. I rocked that mug till it wouldn't play no more. Strictly for my niggas. Um, I was on DOS Effects. You know what I'm saying? I was on DJ yeah. Quick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you you think, DJ Quick, you don't think artistry until you hear four or five of his albums where, Boy. man, Boy. I'm talking about singing. I'm talking about the way he playing them keys. It wasn't just gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? DJ yeah. Quick was an artist. Um, yeah. Underrated I mean, producer. I was on Underground Cat. Uh, Escari X. We was on uh, True Blue. Um, high, high C. RBL Posse. RBL Posse. Mm-hmm. So we was on, we was on that, and then Ice Cube, uh, death certificate, E forty. Um, that's what's up. Yeah, so. that's what's up. That's what's up. So basically, blast whatever, whatever your bro was on, you was on the same thing. Everything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I, now I separated myself once. I mean, cause he liked the gangster stuff, you know what I mean. And that was cool. But then once he got me on this Razzcast dude, man, I was just like, man. <laughs> uh, then, I started on, then I started getting on cannabis, you know what I mean? And oh, can yeah, I bust yeah. and, and all these yeah. other cats, man, Nas. And I was just like, because East Coast rap, like we didn't really, if you notice, he didn't mention no East Coast rappers, but DOS effects, you know what I mean? But uh, the East Coast starts. So now I started seeing, oh, snap. You got some cats over here. Now the production ain't really that good, but the bars and what they saying was wow. It was wowing me. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, who would come up with that? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's where I started started listening to more kind of East Coast type of music. You know what I mean? And uh, I think I think one of the the best things ever is when you can take a West Coast artist like Ras Cast. But he has the vocabulary and the cadence of an East Coast cat. Yeah. East Coast cat that sounds like he's from West Coast. And back when 10, 15 years ago, that really mattered. Mm-hmm. Now you listen to somebody, everybody yeah. doesn't have their turn. Now it's just about what sounds good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, mm-hmm. like some of our secular stuff, like I wish, I wish cats could really see the skill. That like Jay Blast half you listen to our our secular stuff, even to this day. I'm talking about it's 2000. I can let you hear something from 1998 mm. at a bake your noodle with with the vocab like that. with that with <laughs> cadence. You know what I'm saying? With I'm yeah. telling you, like crazy, crazy. A lot, a lot of that, a lot of that definitely was drugs though. Drugs and alcohol. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, bro, that, that thing, man, shoot. Yeah. You think you ain't, you, you can rap, but if you rap and you high, though, Boy. Man, Yo, that's, I preached that for, why, for hours, but yeah. thank oh, God wow. he delivered me from that one, boy, because shoot. But I, I'm going to tell you right now, since we're talking about influence, really, the group or the album that had the biggest influence on my whole I would say even before, if I could take one influence that could span out my whole musical love for music career, it's going to be Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music. Mm. You know what mm. I'm saying? Mm. Like, that's probably my favorite album ever. Um, I would have to say Outkast is my favorite group ever. And even though I used to bang Tupac back in the day, I think my love for Outkast outweighs my love for Pac. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Like... Like <laughs> oh, that's the that that, that uh, Outcast had on me. Now, Pac, 
is up there with it, but just the influence of creativity and being different. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's who I am. I'm a different kind of dude. I never went with the, with the flow of the water. I always went against the grain. I always strive to do something different. Um, matter of fact, back when I first started rap, rapping, my name was Dev the Abnormal. Um, I was just so abnormal. You know what I'm saying? I was just so... <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a rapidly rap Hall of Fame name. That's a wild yeah, rap name. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, anybody that got the... In their rap name, I was like, I know which era you from. Anybody with uh, in it, I know where you coming from. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, but, uh, I, I just man, yeah, Outcast was it as far as my love for music. I probably love them probably the most. And then, That's what's uh, up. and then you know, it's you, this is gonna really make you crazy. You know who else had a big impact on me just because of the of the you know of the proximity? Man, Rich the Factor and Major Factor I, Records had a big influence. <laughs> I'm telling you, like a big influence just yeah. because of the proximity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 But yeah so you I'm, know what's interesting? Like I I know this question, this I'm I'm jumping in here, but uh like every time someone asks this question for me. I, I am hesitant to answer it because you are influenced by like the music that you are around and you grew up with, right? So for me, I grew up super sheltered and super like church boy in my church bubble. So I didn't listen to any Biggie, Pac, nothing growing up. All we knew was John P. Key and Commission and Mississippi Children's <laughs> Choir and all of that stuff. So when I got to, so when I got to listen to music, I just started listening to the weird stuff because I'm a weird guy. Like, I like crazy stuff. So I liked people like Buster Rhymes and I liked Nelly and I liked Outkast and stuff because they just made like different like type of music or whatever. And then so See. like, I don't even, I don't tell people like people, people like get on here talking about oh pop this and biggie this and I'll just be sitting here like, but I put that Buster Rhymes. You know Bro, what I'm I thought I thought you was gonna say Brother Lynch hung when you said weird. Like I like weird stuff, and I thought you was about to go Brother Lynch. And I was about to say, okay, yeah. No, no, not like that. Not like okay, that. Not like right, that. Right, but right, like right. I just had my era when I actually got into stuff was just different than other people, whatever. So don't judge me on that. I mean, you didn't I mean, those are those, those were amazing artists, though. Your Busta Rhymes, yeah. Nelly went yeah. diamond. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one of the three of uh, the rappers that ever done it. You know what I mean? So, Yo, speaking of speaking of, y'all need hey hey internet. Look at me in my eye. Look at hey internet. Hey, put some respect on Nelly name. First man, thing Ludacris, right? Huh? Put some man. respect on his name. Huh? Man, that's nice, y'all, man. Y'all wilding out here. Uh-huh. And this is what, what Luda gonna do? This when is I, I, I gotta put uh-huh. my pin in right quick. This is my uh-huh. thing. I'm telling man, Nelly got more hits, but Luda got the streets, bro. Luda gonna win that thing, bro. Luda no, gonna win. Luda got, Luda got records. He Luda got more. He got Luda more got radio streets records. To me. No, no, Nelly got yeah. radio joints. Luda got joints that can touch the streets, bro. He do. Now, Luda got stuff that can touch the streets, but with baby, huh? That's what he gonna play. He gonna play, baby, baby, baby. Huh? Huh? That's what he gonna play. Go come down. It's go come down to who who has more of the influence, because because Manny Fresh had the streets. He got smoked. <laughs> bring this battle up. I am so every week. Yeah. Every week you bring this battle up and you get my blood no, pressure no, up. No, 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 I'm no. Bringing this no, battle no, no, up. No, 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 no. This is the first time I brought it up. You brought it up, and I always challenge you every week. I don't want it. <laughs> Sky Storage did not blow out Manny Fresh, and I'm tired of you saying hey, throw I'm this tell- propaganda out here. I'm, I'm tired of you saying it. He I'm didn't blow out. What, what I was surprised that here's where Manny Fresh lost. When he played the song he, TQ. No, he was one dimension. <laughs> oh, it was cash money. I didn't know Scott Storch was doing all them joints, bro. Exactly. Like, oh, man, Scott Storch, man, he scorched that boy, man. Many yeah. friends. <laughs> no, but man, he was up in the beginning. He was up like four fair. one in the like, beginning. It wasn't fair. I love Manny, but he was he was yeah, going to get somebody. That wasn't a good. That game. wasn't a good one, bro. Okay, okay, all right. Let me. We got to get back on track, Dre. Let me get your influences so we can get to this battle. Hey, yeah, yeah. Brent, this oh, is your man, fault. Bringing up Nelly. This my my bad. 
My bad. Dre, My your bad. influences, so we can jump into this. My biggest influence is Jay. Um, I, everybody know Jay is like my favorite rap. Well, Jay Blast. Me, Jay has always been my. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew that. I man, I was tripping though. <laughs> I, hey man, I appreciate that man. I'm humble, bro. I'm humble. Jay, Jay, two points, two points, two points for Jay Blast. Two points for Jay Blast. <laughs> but up until recently, Jay's been my favorite rapper. He just got surpassed by somebody else to become my all-time favorite. Oh, uh, but. You know he's uh he's been he's the biggest influence on me when I was doing music, mostly him and him and Biggie. Uh, I always love people who could rap, but also who could who could uh hit all kind of different areas, right? Like Biggie was Biggie's um Biggie's first and second album were like the king, the were like the blueprints of being able to do the song that was like for the chicks, and then one for the club, and then one for the West Coast, one for the East Coast, one that can bang anywhere, you know. And so like them two at that time were like the artists who who personified that the most at the time. And so those are the ones that had the biggest influence on me. Cause I love, I'm not the biggest, I wasn't always the biggest fan of like East Coast beats, but I love East Coast rap. It's kind of like what, uh, what uh, JB was saying. But when they was, I was able to see them rap on other people's stuff and it kind of helped me to, to formulate a style where I could do, I could be a lyricist, but I could do it over all kinds of different beats. You know what I mean? So it'd be my biggest influence. So, so you said he was surpassed here recently. Who, who's your favorite now? Drake. Drake? Okay. Drake is my favorite artist. Like Drake is interesting. In, in twelve years of of phenomenal music, like, <laughs> like love him but hate him. You can't deny him. He's he's incredible. You know now, I mean? okay. So I pose a question: Can you be the Can you be the greatest? I guess he could. That's I, his opinion. But he has ghostwriters. What do you think about that? No, notice. Listen, I said my favorite artist. Favorite. My personal favorite. Okay. When it comes to right. artists, when right. it comes to artists, I'm not. I'm not saying he's the best rapper. I'm saying overall artist. My second favorite artist now would probably be a tie between Jay and Kanye. Okay. I would never put Kanye in the same category as them as rappers, but as an artist, like all around artist, I, I enjoy all around artistry more. Than, I, like the new rappers who can't really rap, like I can enjoy their music if they got dope flow. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like he might not be saying nothing, but the way he ride a beat is crazy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I can enjoy all around music like that. Now, there's a big difference between between being the best and being the favorite. That's a whole other conversation. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. <My> bad. <laughs> all right, cool. I think that's yeah. a perfect yeah, that's a perfect segue to jump into this battle. So we're gonna get into it. Uh, let's start off. So Jay Blast goes first um, as the challenger, and you start off with uh, "Go to Hell" um, as your first record. Um, a feature record. Well, I guess it's not a feature record in terms of you had another artist on that particular part of the battle, but Sauce featuring yourself. Um, definitely a standout verse, fire verse, fire song. What made you want to start with that record first? I mean, it was pretty simple. I just didn't want Dre to use it. <laughs> 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 nah, nah. In all seriousness, uh, I do, I do think that was a uh, that was a hard verse. You know what I mean? Uh, that was a hard beat. That was a hard song yeah. all together, and everybody came with it. Um, I just hate that I had to do both of them like I did on that on that song. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I chose to play that one <laughs> because, <laughs> because Dre. I almost put Dre on there. I almost took Sauce out and used Dre, but I didn't want to use him. To win, you know, around and be like, <laughs> didn't win. Dre won it for you. So I was like, nah, I can never let them say that. So I was like, right, I'm gonna leave Sauce on there because Sauce came with it too. You know what I mean? And that that go to hell joint is a, is a nice joint. A nice. Thing. That's what's up. That's what's up. And so I Dre, knew, I knew you were gonna play that. I just didn't know when. When I knew it was coming. I just didn't know when. See, <clears throat> see, to me, this is one of those. This is when, again, I believe going first can be in your advantage. Because after watching this, because uh, I watched the, the battle a couple times, and this is a good chess move. And I appreciate the chess move. Because not only did you play a song that you guys were on together, you were disrespectful enough to cut him off before he came on. <laughs> Which I just the same thing. I just, I took, I one thousand percent respect that. It's the loop. It's the loop. You know what I'm saying? I know you're on the song. 
and I'm going to shut it off before you come. I, I just like it. It's great to me. I mean, that's good. I like it. Mm. <laughs> I, I think, man, 1, that first song, Go to Hell, was probably in my top three J Blast verses. Yeah, it's up there. I would, I would say post, post Christian, top three J Blast verses. Yeah, you smoked that. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt that it's on probably like one of the best uh, project mixtapes to come out of KC. Yeah. Like that's a certified classic in the town. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. And that helps. All right. So, so Dre, you know, we're not going to spend too much time dwelling on email gate. Um, nah, hey, I, I I messed that up. It was me. Daddy Rally Gate. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't going to leave my mans out there like that. I told him it wasn't me. What happened was, what happened was I had sent, uh, I had sent Dan for my tracks earlier in the week. Like, I asked him like Wednesday. And I had them in a Dropbox folder. And then that day, my man Trey P, shout out to Trey P, he hit my inbox and was like, yo, uh, where can I get the maturation? It's nowhere on um, on any other any other uh, streaming services. So I was like, I got a Dropbox link I'll send you. So I sent him the Dropbox link, and he hit me back and was like, yo, the files aren't working. So I went and opened up the Dropbox thing, and I was and the files weren't in there. And I'm like, what's going on with my files? So I re-put them in there, copied it and pasted it, and sent it to him. Then I hit went to my, my files that I had sent to Deb to see if they were still there and they was working. When I went there, they weren't there. So I was like, dang, let me remake that mug. I remade it. And when I sent him the link, I didn't copy the new link. I just sent, I, I pasted the same one I had just sent uh, my man Trey P. That's how I ended up sending him the wrong one. So it was me. It wasn't, it wasn't him. They didn't line me up. <laughs> you know I mean? two, two, two things. For me, um, that just made me make sure that, for one, uh, I need to concur with the artist before the battle. Like, these are the songs you sent. So that's the thing. Second thing, just the CEO in me, your, uh, the maturation is not on no streaming sites. You need, to get, you need to get them on there and get that coin, my dog. I need to talk to the person who owns KCR about that. <laughs> I, have no, <laughs> I have no say in that, right? Yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> Y'all holler at that man White Watson about to get that up. I have no idea what's going on with that song. But yeah. Dope, dope. So I so need to clear up there for my man. For my man, and I put that on my Facebook page too for people to, to see. So yeah. they didn't line me up like I thought they was trying to set me up. But he went, Hey, hey, you know hey, hey, uh, Drake, I was ready to, hey, I was ready to roll on death, you know what I'm saying? We rolling, hey. hop up the party like that. Hey. So you I go back, I go, you know I go back and cool. watch, and I see the comments, and I'm like, Oh, they doing my brother die. I said, No, nah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and told Dre, hey man, you need to make a public apology. <laughs> hey, yo, you need hey, to cause he already he 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 Twitter, uh, Tumblr, LinkedIn, <laughs> you need to go to all them joints crazy. to say, hey, I apologize. I you can't rally myself. You, you know, know what's so crazy is when I put I, I put the original video on Chef Dev, but I was watching the video. Um, while it was going on on Praise 95. And for like about 15 minutes, I was like, where are the comments at? Because I couldn't even see, because I was mm. watching them on Praise 95. I was like, hold up, something ain't right. I was like, oh, then I clicked to Chef Dev and it was like 300 comments. So I didn't even catch when, when niggas was on my head because I'd have, I'd have been back. <laughs> but I, hey. And they were still coming, you know? I didn't know you could But it's the second time, comments, Dev, right? because when you was playing, when, when it was 83 versus Shock, and, you, and they played a... Uh, L-O-V-E. L-O-V-E. I, I was about to ride on you. Like, Dev, come on, bro. Hey. You messed up, dog. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> hey. What's happening? I had I was waiting. I had the comment. I had the comment ready to hear saying, like, yo, what's up? I said, hold up, let me wait. Let me wait and see what happens first. And then when Chris came in, I went, Oh, okay. Okay, so listen, y'all. When well, y'all in the comments, easy on the easy on the button. Give let it play out for a little bit. Let it because the internet is forever. Let it play out for a little bit and see what happened. Cause I was made that same mistake. I had to, I had the comment lined up like, "Shit, what's up, bro? Why you playing?" And I, oh my bad, my bad. And, and you know, the one thing, the one but, thing about the verses Chris about told it. me when Chris told me, I'm like, "Why are you gonna play that?" But like me and like everybody else, nobody knew that mm-hmm. he was the yeah. rider on there and arranged yeah. it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. I kind of, I wasn't surprised, but yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, what you about to say, Dre? Um, I don't even know. Oh, oh man, something about the thing about the verses, but okay. 
Oh, the thing about the versus battles is like even on the, like all of them. I've been on all the versus battles since the first one, the Timberland and uh, uh, Swiss Beast thing. One of the most fun things about them is the comment section. The comments get crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's where the jokes fly off and all that good stuff. Yes. So, yeah. The comment section is part of the is part of the culture. So uh, that's I'm, part hey, that's part of the battle. Yeah, yeah you, especially if you get a rose one in there, you get some you get a wildfire two in the comments. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. And there actually was a couple of them. <laughs> I ain't gonna give them, give them the satisfaction to say their names. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We saw the hell was like. Yo, who is this dude. Now this, now this dude I know, but who are you? You know what I mean? And I was like, man, hey, bro. I didn't even. What my street, bro? I didn't even, I bro. I didn't even realize it until De- Dev's wife had posted. She was like, I wouldn't even go watch this, but I enjoyed it. It was the most funniest one, and the comment section was crazy. That's when I went back and looked at all the comments. I was like, yo, this was wild. <laughs> and I couldn't see wild. no comments while we was doing it. So oh, I right. had to go back hey. and watch it over. Well, this the thing. And then I hey, said, please. I was like, huh? So the reason you couldn't see him, because you started a watch party. You can't see mm. the comments in the watch party. Okay. So, yeah, you, did. you started a watch party on your Facebook page. Yeah. You couldn't see him. That's why you couldn't see him. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, so next hey, time. Learn something new today. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, boy. Because they was like, not with the cards again. <laughs> oh, that was the best. <laughs> Hey, but, 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 that was that was a, that was a chess move on my part. <laughs> See, uh, you put the cards out. When I saw him talk the second time, I was like, "Let me tell y'all something, fans." He pulled out these cards because he don't think y'all smart enough to catch his bar. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. Really I seen, I like, seen that. Yeah, I was, I was in too deep. Chess? I was in too deep. I'm like, I got all these cards, and I gotta use them. <laughs> y'all, I've been on listen. Like, listen. All night, the first I was cutting these mugs. It was fire. I was cutting these mugs. I was writing. I ran out of paper. Uh-oh. I went to Dollar General. I had to get some more. He's... Got to cutting some more. I'm like, <laughs> I got to use these mugs. <laughs> I'm a different dude, man. I want to do something Shout different. Out. All I see hey. is just Bob and When you first did it, it was fire. I was like, OK. But then you kept doing it, and it went from fire to hilarious. And then he just had diminishing returns. <laughs> <laughs> it was diminishing returns. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, shout out to Arson and Oh, man. shoot. Shout out to <laughs> Arson and <laughs> Yo. Hey, these kids don't do homework one way or the other. <laughs> If I would have seen if I would have seen those comments, I probably would have. I probably would have. All right, okay, maybe that's too much. <laughs> I thought you guys were enjoying it. <laughs> Y'all oh. crazy, man. So yo, so Dre, Justify is your first record you play. Um, yeah. So what's the what's the idea? What's the reason behind Justify? Um, uh, Justify, I. So, all right, here's a lesson I learned from 83 and them battle, right? Remember we talked about the, the concept of people having nostalgia over songs that you think are dope, right? Mm-hmm. I did not want to put Justified on the playlist. I only put it on there because I knew it was something that was nostalgic for people. And so when he, when he played uh, when he played Go to Hell, I was like, what's this round? I already knew it. So let me get my weakest track out, out here now. But it's got enough nostalgia in it where some people will say, Mmm, that's a close one, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I personally admit that I lost that first round, but I know I put some out there that was enough to make people at least think about it before they just gave it to JB. So that's the reason why I played just fine. I hear you. Hey, 83, this is a note for you, right? Dre had the issue, and I think even in the comments, I put, uh-oh, when all this was happening, it's a battle. Presentation matters. Even if he brings out his best song, he might still lose the round because he could not – get the mu he didn't get the right music to him. Yep. He probably still loses that round. Presentation matters. Now Yeah, and I, I had Dre losing that round uh because one, uh I love Justified, um, but you gotta lose points for pulling a Teddy Riley. You got yeah, to sure. you, know you got to lose right. you know right. I accept that. So I, that, that. So that I believe yeah. I would I believe I would have lost that round even if it, even with the stuff was was straight. Like, this I was true. playing Justified this anyway after you played Go to Hell. I mean, you know what I mean? So, because yeah. I knew, yeah, I knew I, I I'm was giving, it was two songs I knew that was I'm coming. I'm a fan. 
I'm a fan of the chess move. It was a good chess move. One old JB going into One the, old JB. To the, to the first. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, cool. So let's jump into track two. Uh the boss by J by J B. So um the boss on it. What's what's the uh idea of playing the boss here? Okay, the idea of playing the boss, I believed that I don't have many uh, songs without my wife, right? And mm -hmm. I talked to Dre about this, and I was like, man, I don't want to play anything that even has her on it. And he was like, man, I mean, y'all won. I, I mean, y'all can just play with her, too. And I was just like, I don't want to jump you. You know what I mean? Because then <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> That wouldn't be fair. It's not Jay Blast Lady C versus Dre. You know, it's Jay Blast versus Dre. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm like, I had to really just go go in the bag of everything that I had solo. You know what I mean? So that's why I did majority of the songs that I had are solo songs. You know what I mean? Um, and the boss was one of them. I thought the boss was a heavy, heavy song, man. When when I did it, uh, I used to get a lot of people telling me, man, that mugs. I mean, overall, the overall song, you can't really capture everything in a verse. That overall song, though, uh, from the verse, to, I think I had like four verses on there, and you usually only have three songs. I mean, uh, three verses on a song. Three verses, yeah. Um, yeah, so the boss, I just I just thought it was a, it's a fun track, you know what I mean? Um, and I just I just knew that it would, it would hit, but I didn't know how hard it would hit. But in my book, it hit pretty hard. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Dre, and then you counter with the maturation intro. Yes. What what should what are you thinking going in with, with with that second record? This is when I knew I'm about to start heating up. This is my this is my mind frame. I'm about to start heating up now, right? So let me get this out there because I think uh for me, I think the maturation intro is one of my top my three big, my three best songs. This is just me personally. Uh that intro is in the beat, first of all, is incredible. Um, it's some of the best rapping I've done, like in my entire career. On that, just keeping that same pattern, the same uh, rhyme scheme in the pattern for however many bars that was. <laughs> it was a long, long, a long joint. And so it's um, uh, and I know a lot of people, a lot of people love that intro. Like it starts the it starts the album off incredibly well, and it's it's well known. It's very popular intro. And so I was like, let's 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 get into the bag now. And so. Even though he felt like he won that round, I felt like I won that round. Let's get into it, JB. It was good. Well, the reason, no. the, reason, the reason why I say that is because, like I told you, the boss was was such a a, a dope song that somebody took it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody else took the song. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not going to say that. But, hey, yo, you might just slide, slide off air. I need to know who that is. Like, what's he done? I need to know who that is. We got to talk a little bit after we hit after we stop the recording. I need to know that. Y'all 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 don't remember somebody else who got a song called The Boss? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Now. Now I think about it. <laughs> yeah. I so I have an idea, but when we're done, we'll we'll confirm if my idea is correct. I have an idea. I have you, an idea. Said somebody, you said somebody took the song title. See when you said somebody took the took the song in, in the hook. Oh, so. In the hook. In the hook. Okay. Okay. I have. I have a. I have a few I mean, leads. Definitely. I have a few leads. Took the idea. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's what. Yeah. Somebody was. In, somebody was inspired. Somebody was inspired. Was inspired. Somebody there was you inspired. go. <laughs> there you go. Somebody, somebody was inspired. They just took the song, but they they was inspired by it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? At the time, though, I thought, you know, just with everything that was going on uh, with just the other labels, I thought it was very disrespectful at the time, but. Me and this individual are, are, you know, we're we're cool. We we're casual when we see each other, man. I got a lot of love for him, man, and his ministry and what he does, man. He's awesome in my in my opinion, and uh, uh, as an artist and as his other, you know, uh, occupation or calling. So yeah, that's what's up. Okay, we got past, we got past it. I, I would say I would say um, the maturation. I love how you was riding the beat, although I didn't really like the beat too much. Um, the energy was dope. Uh, it, you know what? You sounded real, real. The maturation is an album that sounds real, real, uh, C H H ish. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what, no, no, I'm saying it had that, that formula of what a C H H album would sound like. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the intro, 
Um, you were flipping, you were flowing. I, 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 I heard everything you were saying. I just, I, you know, I, I probably, um, it wasn't one that I would listen to every time I put in a Dre, the Dre Senior album. You know yeah. Saying? So like when, when, uh, when we when y'all did the Johnny John review, and uh, both uh, you and you and Roy both said that y'all remember like y'all would ride around to the boss like that was judge y'all rode around to. I yeah. roll around to the to the maturation intro like that. <laughs> listen, listen, let, let let Dre relax. I got this. Relax, relax. Are you crazy? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? The fact that you know what you're reading was amazing. <laughs> the sonic beat that month was crazy. Crazy. Now here's the thing. Just the just the instrumentation alone was amazing. The <laughs> guitar in that mug, that mug was crazy. And that's a lot of guitar player too. When Dre Senior performed, oh, it definitely get me hype. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, I just couldn't wait till uh, three more of the songs he was gonna do was coming on. But in my right. car, I probably, when I put in a CD, that would not be one that I skipped to. You know what I'm saying? See, for me, I would rather, I would rather hear the boss at a concert than in the car. I would rather hear the intro in the car than the concert. That's me. That's because you never have 415s in the epicenter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have tweets and you like to be around. <laughs> you know that makes a big difference. Hey, you know, big difference. Two, it's two different types of music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what though? I think I think what I think both of you guys make good points, right? Um, because sonically, um, the maturation there's a lot of instrumentation coming in it. Like, like you got what strings, you got guitars, you got all that going on. Whereas the boss, like, it's a trunk rapper. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you if you got if you got that package in your trunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to hear that? Mm, 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 what? The you boss. Know the box is hard. The maturation intro is beautiful. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the um, <laughs> like, like me and you, like me and you. So come down to paper. Paper. What do you want? Like me, like when we talked on what? the phone. When we talked on the phone, right? And we was yeah. like, it's all really preference. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I feel yeah. like God has called me to go and minister to the people of where I came from. So this is what they listen to. This is what they say, man, I can't get out my CD player. So I made, I make music based off of that. You know what I mean? It's, it's the bait. You catch bait or you catch fish with different bait. And I think your album, uh, it, it was more of teaching the people after I caught the, you know, after I caught them and brought them into the church. Now they can, now they think they can get edified and then they can learn some things. You know what I mean? But I couldn't be so... I think I think also justification, justification, and all of that stuff because they don't understand that you know yeah. at first. I think also, I think Carlos asking the question, what our influences were at the beginning, kind of add some add some clarity to our different point of views too. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like I said, I was more influenced by not not just the like uh, content wise, but just um, stylistically wise. If you listen to my album, it's one of those albums where it's. It's got different elements. You can hit, you got the joint with the, you got the joint that's for lyricism. You got the joint that's for party. You got the joint that's for the chick. You got the point that's for this. That's my style. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. even before I got saved, that's the style of music I would like to listen to, type of album I would make. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So even yeah. content inside, just the the presentation of it. Yeah, it, yeah. Even if it's the way that we just we just said our styles are different. It's a style clash. At the end of the there, day. It there, there it is. There it is. So I got a question I, first. I'm I got the one more. Hold on, okay, we'll get to that. We're gonna get to the next song, but I got a question for Dre, then a question for Blast. So, first of all, shout out to Brent. Um, Brent's ratio of making fire beats is probably 100%. Uh, he made incredible beats. If you listen to my mixtape, he did I'm In Love For Me. Um, he did some other joints. So, like, he, 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 he had some heat, he had some heat. But yeah. for you, the first time you hear that, what are you thinking? The first time when he presents that beat to you for the first time, what, what are your thoughts? I need that. That's mm -hmm. my first <laughs> I need that beat. In fact, I don't even think he sent that to anybody else. I think he made that beat specifically for me when he made it. And when I called him back, I'm like, yo, fam, this is, you smoke this joint. Like, yeah. Brent, me and Brent, I, lo I love Brent's 
uh, production style. And it, 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 is, it varies. He, do, he does all kinds of different work. But I always just, he's one of my favorite producers, at least at the time, because we were always, it was like we'd be clicked. You know how, you know how Shock and 83 had that, they just click? It's the same thing with me and Brent. I could go to Brent just because I need a beat, and he just send me a package of beats, and whatever he sent me, more than likely it was going on the album. And, and that was a time where he had just got back into making beats as well. He just got back into producing. So he came heavy in his bag when he got he back. Some crazy samples, too. He, he came crazy. back heavy in his bag. I, I'm pretty that's sure what, there was like four tracks on the album that he did. Yeah. That's what's up. So, so, my main let. so Blash, you said that you make music for, for where you came from. Elaborate on that. Where are you from? So, I, I, I will say I'm a, I'm a, I come from the streets, man. You know, I, uh, I didn't grow up in the church. Um, like my brother said, you know, he, he was, he was selling dope at 13, you know what I'm saying? 14 years old. And I'm around that, you know what I'm saying? So it was only, of course, it was a matter of time before I started doing the same thing he's doing. You know what I mean? Um, coming from, uh, just a, you know, a mother, you know, uh, who was in the streets, you know, I ain't gonna put her stuff out there, but you know, a father that really wasn't around, uh, he was financially because child support is a mug, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't gonna say he, he didn't come in every now and again and try to get us, uh, because I remember living with him, military kid, you know, uh, living with him sometime, but for the most part, it was just me, my brother Devin, my brother Derek, and my mom, you know what I mean? And we came over a little rough, man, a little rough around the edges, so like he said, we listening to this, these Tupacs and these Ice Cubes and all of this stuff. And we live in that too. Uh, when I got saved, uh, I, all, I, all I wanted was to, man, if my friends, if they can, if they can get a taste of this cake that I got, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like maybe mm -hmm. they will, you know what I mean? I think I can do that by, with this music. We have this music still in common. So, mm -hmm. And it, and it actually happened, man. I mean, I think Dev, man, Dev really gave his life to the Lord after listening uh, yeah, from, the from the street to the church. Really sad. And I didn't play not one song from the street to the church just because I didn't like the engineering. Like, it, was, it wasn't as quality sounding, so I didn't play anything from that. And y'all probably don't even know anything about it. I, but, hey, that send was, that to me when you're done, bro. Hey, when we're done, like, send that to me. That was a hard job. I said, yeah, I send you a foul. I got it, man. That was that's hard. Just you know what was crazy? I'll go, ahead, go ahead, Dave, and I'll, I'll pick up after that. Go ahead, Dave. Piggyback, JB was saved five years before me, and mm -hmm. it was night. I'm coming home from the club. I'm, I got chicks in the bed mm -hmm. with me, whatever, whatever, and he's like, man, I'm praying for you. Boom, boom, boom. And then when I actually started listening to when he when his album was done, I was afraid to go in the church, man. I used to pull up to the church over there at the Nehemiah Center, and I used to listen to his whole album, afraid to go into church, and I'd be crying, and the Lord be purging me, and then the people start coming out, and I'll roll out like I have my church for the day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, glory to God, you know what I'm saying? Because I was like, I didn't, I was afraid of the judge, the judgment that that comes with going to church or being a Christian, because I'm like, what the block gonna think? Mm. And that that and for a long time, that's what stopped me from going into church, but I was still getting the word just off his album. You know what I'm saying, and then until I nope. in. so that's nope. interesting that you that you say that that you know as you explain your background because it that it also explains I think why my music was tailored the way it was because I didn't grow up in the, I grew I'm from the hood but I ain't grow I wasn't part of the street I wasn't in the streets like that you know what I mean I know how to navigate through the hood because I'm from there but I'm the dude that grew up in church but never was like you said at the beginning I would acknowledge God but I didn't really live for God you know what I mean. And when I got saved, I had a mind frame that the place I grew up at was teaching, wasn't teaching me correctly, right? Mm -hmm. So all of my music from that point is coming from the standpoint of somebody that felt like they had been lied to <laughs> and is directed at the people in church like me who felt like they haven't, like, like they haven't been getting what they should be getting from inside the church. You see what gotcha. I'm saying? So gotcha. I think that explains our, our different approaches to the music. Yeah. <clears throat> For sure. This this is another uh, another thing that came up during like uh, the eighty three Chris thing, right? Because their music, although they're both singers, their music are, is vastly different. Chris tells you he make uh, glasses music, right? He make he make music for you know the suburbs and people who just wanna who like uh, you know pop music and stuff like that. And eighty three coming with some 
you know, some more aggressive type singing, right? And so even when we do these verses, like, it's, you, Dev is trying to do the best that he can to, like, match catalogs or whatever, but it's difficult when even the rappers um, have vastly different audiences and styles mm -hmm. or whatever. So, mm -hmm. like, the way that I'm going to rate this this battle or, or call it is going to be different because of my background and my preference and what I'm doing versus what yours is. Like, I already heard y'all, you know, podcasts, and I understand that, you know, everybody can be wrong sometimes. And you guys are wrong. But I understand your <laughs> point of view, you know what I'm saying? You, your opinion can be wrong, you know what I'm saying? Real, real be, quick, you know? you know what, real quick, with all these battles, especially all the KC people, when me and wifey got to talking about it, it was really never intended for a winner. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's all in fun. Yep, right. Give a, a chance to play music and just fellowship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we know everybody has different audiences. Yep. It was right. never intended to, oh, they got a win, they got a winner. And I think with all the battles, I mean, nigga, Erica Badu and Jill Scott had 700,000 people on that mug. And Yo, that's the first. That's the first one that I say is no winner. The other, like the, that, that battle genuinely had me like, hey, the culture won. I, <laughs> hey, I, I, hey, I thought the same way about, uh, about Neo and Jonte Austin. I didn't even I see that. I, here's the thing with Teddy and Rally, Teddy and Face. I think Teddy won. With Jill and, and Erica Badu, I think Jill won. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that's just. That's just me. Well, I didn't. I didn't listen to either one of those. But if I was to think between Jill and Erica, Erica Badu has more music that we're familiar with than Jill. Yeah, but but so, Jill, but Jill's music had more impact when it comes to me than Erica Badu's. Okay. See, Erica Badu got three songs, but Jill was playing them back to back. I'm like, yo, like yo, like. Oh, uh, damn! Yeah, but you taking a long <laughs> walk in the park after a dog. <laughs> 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 oh, Larry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's funny. So, but yeah, so, you know, and, and so we, we knew people was going to have different, people got their own, it was just an opportunity. Now, with one of these battles coming up, we know it's going to be hard to be a winner because we got somebody from a whole nother city that got their city on their back and got somebody from here that yeah. got the city on their back. So it's just an opportunity to get on other people's platform. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For other people, and that's what it's, it's, it's meant to be. But yeah, so, you know, um, you know, we gonna all have our opinions, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and different and I, and, and I slipped because I, man, I'm so busy, man, doing other things. I didn't really let a lot of people know. I mean, I just put it on my Facebook, you know what I mean, for what that's worth. But I didn't really let people know, like, when it was. Like, a lot of people now, like, man, y'all had that? I'm like, man, yeah, we had. You see the date on there? It's like, yeah. man, you're supposed to. So if I, I should have really, because it seemed like in the comments, hey, it's just all Drake, all Drake people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You oh got you got to get people fighting in the comments, bro. Now, you hey, had to come with your comment army. I know, I, I, know, know, now, I know now. I know now. I, I know now, now when I call Michael Watts out. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> when, we, when we battle next, I know I know I have my people there, you know. <laughs> you got to do That's it with the cue cards. <laughs> Probably not the cue. <laughs> <laughs> and not the smoke machine. Not the, if you had a smoke machine, had the windows nah, open. I got to put some smoke because I want smoke. You got to have the windows open so the alarm don't go off, though. <laughs> I didn't think about that one. Yo, that's what's up. So, all right. So, coming out of that one, I have it one one as well. I say for myself, musical preference, I'm all over the place. So, like, there are times, like, a lot of times now with my, with my library, I keep it on shuffle. Um, and so, like, sometimes I surprise myself with what comes on. Like, I'd be like, yo, where this folk song come from? I didn't even know this was in, like, this old white lady singing about growing up in the country just end up on my, on my, on my iPod. So, like, my tastes are everywhere. So I can go from cube to folk music to classical to jazz to gospel back to hardcore rap. Like, I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, for, and you, you are right. It does come down to preference. For me, a lot of these rounds, like, I have them edges. You know, so it doesn't mean that, like, I've yet to hear a song in a versus battle where I went, uh, I'm not rocking with this song, period. I might say, 
Yo, I can think of a better song you could have played, right? That maybe makes a round debatable or even gives you the round. But I've yet to hear a record where I go, nah, fam. Like, I'm not feeling this record. Um, so for me, I got a 1-1 one, one going into the third. I, I got um, so right. let's get into this third round. Been loving you. Now, Jay, you talked about a little bit in the battle. Um, no, it might have been a recap where you talked about the process that went into making uh, Been Loving You. Um, uh, the oldest sample, right? Um, and so... Fire, fire, fire. Yes, fire. I want to... So how... You make a lot of the, the production. You did a lot of the production for, for the Lifeline music. Um, I did all the production. So all the production. All the production. So how me, long have you... Me and the Lord. Me and the Lord. How long have you been producing? I've been producing, man, since uh, my first my first album, me and Sharana's first album, From the Streets of the Church. That's what's up. I started. And this, that same auntie... That uh that passed away, man. God rest her soul. She was the religious one in the family, always praying for people, and she knew she was gonna get us one day, and she did. And <laughs> she had this keyboard that's sitting here right here that she gave me, and she said, "I don't know why the Lord is telling me to give you this keyboard." You know what I mean? And I got this keyboard to be able to play because my grandmother, I never knew her. Uh, she uh she died when my mom was 15, but she said she was a good pianist. And I was like, oh, well, shoot, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? She was like, I, I got me this keyboard so it can teach me how to play. But I'm not getting it. So here, maybe you can do something with it. And I was like, what well, I'm going to do with it? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to know how to play. But I took it because I didn't want to be rude. And come to find out, man, I got this mug. I got on this mug. And I was just like, man, this is kind of cool. And then my partner, uh, L.A., who did uh, me and, and Dev's uh, secular album, uh, the trilogy, this dude was a monster. So he had gave me a lot of uh, stuff that I can use, like reason and all these other things and uh, and, uh, and instruments <laughs> and sounds. I start playing with him, man, and I just, I hear stuff in my head. And I just want to put it out and it, it's weird. It's God, bro. It's just God, straight up, man. So I've been doing it for, since uh, 04. 04, I've been producing. That's what's up. So do you do you dig in the crates for a lot of the samples for your records? I don't. I just really, what I feel, uh, I felt like making a sample because it was a Super Bowl party. It was a lot of older people that was going to be there. I'm like, I have to make something for them because this this hard stuff that I got, man, they ain't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 so yeah. let me, what can I do? And then I was like, man, I always love that um Otis Redding, man, like, even for, like, Roll, watching Roll House, you know what I'm saying, these arms of mine. Like, this dude is just, he's, he's, he's awesome, man. And no, I don't know anybody who ever had the sample. So I'm like, I got to do it. So I did it, man. I, I did that whole thing in one night. I All the lyrics, everything, and, and remembered it. So that's why I'm like, that's one of my favorite songs, man. In the process yeah. that went into that, there's nothing that's going to be able to beat this in my mind. Nothing. Understood. That's what's up. That's what's up. I remember that Super Bowl party. That was the Super Bowl when the Patriots uh, lost to the Giants the first. Yes. Yep. I, I feel like I was at that Super Bowl party. Yep. Is that Christian Fellowship? Yeah. Okay. We performed at halftime. Me and JB. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yep. <laughs> all right. All right. And Dre, you counter with O. Hey. Well, you know O. If if I'm being honest, O is probably the biggest song that I have as far as this uh, uh, in the city. Like anytime I did that, no matter where we was, no matter no matter who it was that was there, it was jumping. Like if everybody, I, was I hate to be rude, I gotta get this charger because my stuff gonna go out. So I'll be right back in like thirty seconds. Yep, yep. But yeah, but yeah, that mother, um, it, it it rang off everywhere we went. No matter where I went, if no matter what church I was in, if I was at a church, if we was at an outreach, no matter where I was at. That mug went crazy, and so um, I had to play O just because that's a it's a it's a crowd favorite. It's probably my if if I was to look on Spotify, I think it's probably the most um the most played song that I have on mm. on Spotify. Wow. I knew it was gonna go crazy when the Christian fraternities picked it up, yep. and they started doing it. And then I seen people like strolling at the like the concerts we did. And and I was like, like, oh, I fucking invited, fucking invited to different college campuses all across this, all across the place to do them. Like, that's when, it, that's when it started. That's when I started to kind of develop a name out of St. Louis when people knew me out there. 
Yeah. Uh, just travel. That was starting to help me be able to travel a little bit further than Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, and that's why I uh, I chose that song for that round because I was out there when when uh, St. Louis was getting it, when Mizzou was mm-hmm. getting it, when Southeast Missouri State was getting it. You know what I'm saying? Tennessee State, where my uh, Sorors was, it was it was popping. It was popping. Then uh, I came back to UMKC, and we started doing stuff, and it was on there. So yeah, that uh that that mug brought back a lot, and uh, made me want to get up and strong. You know what I'm talking about? So. <laughs> oh, that joint. I, even shot it. I shot it y'all fraternity out in the song, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, Real yeah. yeah. Real talk. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, um, so how do, how do how are we scoring this one, gents? How are we scoring this one, Trent? I start with you. I, this was actually a really tough one for me because I think I, I rem- if I was there the first time, if I can remember the first time I heard a song and it was impactful that plays a, a, a role. And I remember that Super Bowl party and I thought that sample was fire. <laughs> like I just thought that sample was crazy. So I wish this song would have been up against a different song um, to me, but I just, I just remember performing, oh, so <laughs> many times at weddings, at, at uh, colleges. <laughs> I, think, I think we ran it back like at one like joint at Christian Fellowship, they ran it back like twice or something. Like it was, it, it was just that impactful of a joint. Like I'm not in no fraternity or whatever, but you know, I try to get my stroll on a little bit. You know, what I'm saying? I try to, you know, I try to hit one one time. You know, what I'm saying? So, so, I, I, I got it. Uh, I got it, Dre. Yeah, I, this again. All of these were, are, I have our edges, um, except for the first round. First round is clear. Well. I take that back. Well, I, I have one more where I think it's a little bit more clear for me, um, but I think this is one that I add, that I give to Drake too. Um, that bit, like you said, the sample's crazy. Um, the rapping on it is obviously really good, um, and so. But I, I, I add this one too. I add this one too. So um, let's go ahead and Chev. You gave yours. You said uh, you talked about this on the show, but you just mentioned too that, you know, you did a lot of strolling to this all over. I mean, I didn't know you were, like, all over the country with it, though. You just named a lot of different uh, different colleges across the Midwest and the South where, where you were you guys strolled to this song. Yeah, where we had um, we had, we had branches. Uh, we had um, our fraternity and our sororities. We was on, at one time, we was on 11 campuses across the U.S. So that's what's up. We would meet up and go do different places, mostly in the Midwest, you know what I'm saying, between Missouri and, and uh, Tennessee. Um, then yeah, yeah, we go get it in. So, yep. So that's what's up. That's what's I, up. I get that one to Dre. So I'm at uh two one right now. So. Yep, yep. And I, me and Trent, obviously two one. Dre, Blash, you're two one. You're in your no, you you're three zero. Your favorite? I'm three-0? I'm three zero right now. Three zero, and then two one right now. I'm two one. Me. I hear you. I, <laughs> as you should be. <laughs> as you should be, J Bay. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. I. <laughs> I, I respect as you as these rounds go. I give it when I feel it. You know what I mean. Right. But for right. me, it's just personally for me. Um, you don't get. You can't. You can't beat a Otis Redding sample. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't beat the sample alone. But the it's verse. Tough, yeah. But I the mean, verse, though, man. It's Oh, it's the verses was heavy on that thing, man. Like I, yeah. the verses. Listen, was heavy. JB, the, the, JB, the if was you would have, if you would have had me as your hype man, then yeah. maybe I would have edged it to you. I pretty you never sure. had. Me. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna front. I ain't gonna front. Trent, you're right. You're right. If you're part of it, <laughs> you, that's what you go for. <laughs> yeah. So. If I would have got that band for you, you probably would have gave me this one. This song right here. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find it, man. I couldn't find it. Yeah, we, hey, we tried too, man. We tried, bro. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into this fourth record. Uh, plugged in. JB, what are you thinking? We're now, we're, we're at the, I guess you could say kind of halfway point, right, of the seven right. songs. So, plugged in, what are your thoughts at this point? Plugged in. So, I, I chose plug in because, I mean, he said I can use my wife. You know what I'm saying? He did say that. Now, I didn't use it on all of them. Like he said, I could. But if I'm going to jump them, I'm going to jump them right now. Because <laughs> it's, it's in the middle. We in the middle. So he could easily get one or two 
or even three. I, 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 you know, so my thinking here was the one, whatever he came up with uh, against the uh, the boss, or not the boss, um, go to hell. I didn't think it was going to, I didn't think it was, nothing was going to beat that. Um, so I was like, okay, so I can really be one, two right now. You know what I'm saying? Leading up into this fourth one. So let's jump them now. So at least I can be even, two, two, or up. Or up. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, right, right. That's when I was like, okay, let's get him now and let's jump him. That's one of her fires versus. And one of like the video, the presentation. I was like, here, man, check this out. In the back, the presents, everything. Presentation, beat, flow, you know what I'm saying? The wifey on there. I was like, yeah, I got I got to do it now. So that's what I what I did. So I was going to save this to the end, but I'm going to say it now. Um, I think that – so I've been listening to, you know, your your projects, the Lifeline Project, um, more than music. I've been listening to that all day in preparation for this mm-hmm. because I'm familiar with Dre's music. I am definitely familiar with the with, with, with you and your wife's project. I needed to, I hit Shev up and was like, yo, I need the records because I didn't have uh, Let It Slap. I didn't have Jesus Saves. So I said, let, I need to hear, these, hear this music and let it saturate in my, in my head and mind all day. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, well, yo, go to Lifeline Music. Go to LifelineMusicKC.com. You know, and then I see it's on iTunes. Bet, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to stream it and listen to it. <laughs> so I'm listening to it all day. And I get the plug. I listen to plug in, right? Open it to the, to the mixtape. And I'm listening, and like you said, dope song, you spitting, and then your wife comes on. And I hit them, and I'm like, yo. Like, I said, yo, I said, listen, I told them, I said, JB can rap. JB is dope. He got nice punches. But I'm like, when Lady C comes on, I pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I said, I feel like we missed an opportunity, not only here in Kansas City, but nationally, to put you guys on so that the world could see you yes pierre yes but her also in particular because she got it she got it it, it, that i i use that exact (laughs) that hey i use that exact word i use that exact word i said when she raps i said technically jb's a better rapper but when she raps like she's not using a bunch of punches but when she raps you're listening to what she's saying she is flowing she is flowing. And, and the part of the reason I say that is because, like, I feel like even now within Christian hip hop, we've not done a good enough job of pushing women to the forefront and saying, yo, we got dudes who can spit. Yes. But, yo, check out the women we have and listen to their stories, listen to their music, listen to their flow, the way that, like you said, the way they ride the beat. And so I do feel like that was a missed opportunity for, for us as a culture to push you guys, like I said, so that all of your voices could be heard, but in part so Lady C's voice could be heard too. Amen. Amen. But listen, I was telling him, bro, like, she fired, fam. And I'm going and I'm to get on you a little bit later about that. But I'm going to say it because you, you made a good point. We don't need to de- beat a dead horse. But when we get to it, I got some words to say. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool, cool. Then, Dre, then um, you respond with crazy. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts are behind crazy. Crazy. I told you this is where I'm starting to heat up. I'm starting to get into my bag. I knew he, he had already used sauce against me. So I had a strategy. I was like, I'm going to use this. I'm going to play this, but I'm not going to play sauce versions. I got something special for him later with sauce, right? But crazy was crazy is probably the second biggest song I had next to uh next to oh. And uh, damn, you said it yourself. Not Praise 95. That mug is always in rotation on, on Praise 95. So like I knew that would be one of them songs where the the fans, most of the people listening to this will know this song, mm-hmm. right? More people will know this song than, than know Plug In. And, and I, I'm glad I played it where I played it because Plug In is my favorite song of y'all. Like, y'all, you, you smoked that first verse, bro. <laughs> like, and then she come on there and kill it. Like, and so I'm like, let me play this here because – It'll get more of the it, it, it hits people more in there. I rode around I rode around the city and listened to Praise 95 and heard this on there. You know what I mean? Like it hits that hits that hits that area. So that's where I put that one in there at. Yeah, man. Uh I agree. Like plugged in, man. Uh, you know, dope track, dope track. Um, like this one of them perfect songs. The the verse is perfect, the hook, the beat, it's all stellar. 
Um, just went crazy, crazy. Probably my my fa- if not my favorite from Dre, my second favorite from Dre. Um, just the energy, um, it just everything about it. it. It was a tough one, but I had to I had to go with Dre on that one on crazy. It's just man, and like I said, the only thing I don't like about crazy is that sinister laugh. It's just too loud, especially when you got the tweets. You got the tweets in the six by nines, and woo, I'll be like, ah, Lee, what's he at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so cool. But other than that, like that mug, man, that mug, hey, that mug is hard, and that's why ever since ever since it came, ever since the station been up, it's never been out of heavy rotation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I never uh, dropped it down. Fun fact about crazy. Fun fact about crazy. We changed the beat to crazy a week before we put before we uh put the album out. Good job. Bro. Oh yeah. Remember that? Remember we had a different version of the beat. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't nowhere near as hard or as dark. And uh, oh, I hit the mind up like, yo, send me something different. He sent me this, and it was super hard. I was like, that's it. That's the one right there. So oh, did you have it already that's recorded, and you just put the beat under it, or you re-recorded it? We went and re-recorded it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We was like, this mug was too hard for us to go not to not go crazy on. It, it, the beat was a different energy. The words was the same. Yeah, yeah. But the beat was a different energy. We went there and we recorded it. And sauce and sauce changed his verse a little bit. He changed so one like, line. He changed one line in his and, and that mug was was crazy. So this is my thing. To me, plugged in is probably one of the top two or three music videos ever to come out of like Christian hip hop or in Kansas City, period. Like that mug is fire to me. Like the first, uh, the, the video concept and everything is dope to me. I think it's shot beautifully and the verses is raw. I think the build up from JB first to Lady C, like it's just, it's just a crazy joint to me. However, the guy that may play this should give us that heaven because he was like, like, you just not gonna beat that to me. Like, it's just not. <laughs> Hey, Trafford not- smoked that mix too. Like he did when he did that part of that on that last verse where he cussed it up like that. I was like, "Yo, he smoked that." Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'll I'll say this right now. I'm edging it, Dre. But now that JB has brought out that he had the video in the background, I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. I might come back. We might have another episode. The video is incredible. Like, period. No, the video no I'm just saying. JB says he's got the video playing in the background while he plays a song. I did not know that. I did not catch that. That's what I say. What I what I do? I do. I come with the different. I get. I do something different. I got smoke. I got cards. I got video. You know what I'm saying? You should have said. You should have said. Don't. I put him in the video. That's what you, if we didn't, if we didn't, a package didn't like yeah, that. Yeah, you should have. Hey, 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 if you say that on the live, I'm like, oh, <laughs> clear round for JB. Clear round. <laughs> no <laughs> debate. I honestly thought that's where he was going to go. But I see you play it, I'm like, ah. Uh, in my head, I'm like, dang, he should do it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, I had, you know, I had to bring my man Dre. He did that mug, man. He was, he was so smooth with it that I was like, cool, I got past that. If you would have nah, yeah. that down, I'd have been like, oh, this is tough. Now, now, it, it was tough for me. It was tough for me. Cause plugged in obviously one of, is is a good song for me. Um, but crazy. I wish he would have played the one before he switched the beat. I want I wish he would have played that other one. Ah <laughs> then I probably yeah. would have got him. So the jumping didn't work. The jumping didn't work because <laughs> That's that was a big that was a monster song you know what I'm saying that was a monster song plugged in is a monster song but that was great so you played that in response to plugged in or did you already have it set when you was gonna play it no I I, I had it set okay but once he played plugged in because I had I had one more song that I had that I could I had in the tuck I could have played and I was like I'm gonna wait and see if I would play it in a certain and if I'm thinking back on it now I probably would have played it first instead of playing justified uh but. <laughs> But um, and I, I don't know if it would have worked. It would have been close though. But I was gonna play phenomenal. If I played phenomenal against Go to Hill, that would have been a real close back verse. Uh, Brown. <laughs> but, um, that, that is for, for phenomenal. It, it just it just happened to it just happened to mesh up at the right at the right time like that. Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. All right, cool, cool. So let's jump into this next one, man. Let's get into it. JB, you got let it slap. Um, you know, to 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 save a little bit on time. I'm just gonna announce and then we'll we'll get to the next one. Cause I got a question I want to ask with this next this next selection. So let it slap versus I'm good. Let's just give kind of our uh feedback on who we got who we think got that round. 
So, uh, Shev, I'll start with you. Man, you, you know, with talking about the wolf and letting it slap, I love it, but I'm good. It's my favorite song from Dre. Like, like so it was hard because I, I love Let It Slap so much, but that I'm good. You know what I'm saying? That mug slap too, though. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to go with Dre on that one as well. Okay. Dre? This, this is where I wanted JB to jump Dre. You produced all of these joints. Your wife is fire. Why did you not play New Chick right here? Y'all are one. You made the beat. Interesting. New Chick is a fire. <laughs> Look at his face. Fire. <laughs> <Look at his face. laughs> Missed opportunity. That was New Chick good. right here. Yeah, what are you doing? Yep. Yeah. You are one. Y'all been got that kids. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm a sister, baby. Definitely. Definitely. I didn't think about that. I Bro. did not. That's, that never crossed my mind, bro. That's a great that idea. That's that a great idea. Yeah. All right, man. So with that said, man, I'm, we I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to What are we talking about? I, 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 I went I went Dre, too, with uh, I'm Good Against Let It Slap. Let It Slap is a cool song. I tried to bribe the people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With, with, uh, with the verse, in the verse, I named like five CD players, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Sony Explode, or Clarion, mm -hmm. Kenwood, or whatever. But I had it relating to what I was talking about. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I did. But uh, <laughs> and the, beat, the, beat, the beat hard, man. That mug slap. That mug do slap. But I'm good was... Um, was one of uh, one of Dre's biggest biggest songs in my opinion, and that's when he put the twist on it too. So he put yeah. the twist, and yeah. put sauce on the end of that mug, and I didn't yeah. like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I he, gave, he so I gave jump him. this man, he jump this man. I did not come to play with you, JB. <laughs> and I was I was like, dude, I was like, hey, you gonna get yours, B? <laughs> get yours, B. <laughs> that's what's like up. It. That's what's like up. It. So uh, yeah, I go. I went Dre this round too. I went Dre this round. Um, so this gets me to the song that I wanted to ask a question. So this is the penultimate round, sixth round. Uh, we got Jesus saves versus Romans ten nine. I got a question for you, Chef. So um, you talked about how uh, JB came to the to know the Lord five about five years before you did, and you 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 used to listen to his first album. Mm -hmm. Um, at like and sit outside the church. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the the moment where, where like you broke and you were like, okay, Lord, like I hear you. Yeah, man. Um, it was a couple of moments like that, man. I, I think every somebody might have one. Somebody might have many. Um, um, I remember crying. Uh, but uh, on many of occasions, sitting in that church parking lot. Um, but there was still, I, I, my life hadn't changed. You know, the Lord was touching me then. Um, you know, real quick, the Lord puts a void in all of us that only he can fill. You know what I'm saying? Um, mine, if you, if you want to hear it, I'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mine was, no matter what I had, uh, materialistic-wise, how much money I had, how much popular I was, how popular I was, Lord wasn't going to give me a woman that loved me until I came to him. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So the moment that I had broke, man, this is a real quick testimony, man. This was, I was Chef Dev. I was working at, at 103, had a couple of whips, had all the shoes, had my own crib, had all the money, man. And I must've smashed like three chicks in one night, bro. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to fill that void, you know what I'm saying? And I, and when the last chick had left, man, I just felt so Bro. It felt so terrible. You know what I'm saying, and uh, and I remember that night, man. I I probably started praying at like two thirty in the morning, man, crying and praying, and I didn't get up off my knees till eight in the morning, bro. That was the night that my life changed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was the night that my life changed. Um, now, was, you know, I went from you know three, four chicks a month to. I mean, even since that day, I, I know exactly the day too. Since that day, it's only been, it's been, uh, that was in 08. 
that was 12 years ago. I probably only slept with, you know, the last 12, six, five, five women. You know what I'm saying? So I went from three or four a, a month to five in the last 12 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I, I was celibate for three years before I met my wife. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, that was, that was the night. Now, after that, there was a couple of more things that happened too that, of course, you know, I purged and I cried and I prayed, but that was the night that my life changed. You know what I'm saying? So, so, J, so JB, do you, do you recall like that conversation with your bro and then he's like, Hey man, I think I think I'm I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for I'm ready for God. I'm ready for Christ. Uh, I don't recall the conversation, but I do remember inviting them to church. I used to always try to invite them to the church, and they just wouldn't come. You know what I mean? And I understood they wasn't they wasn't ready. But I do remember when he started coming to church, and I was like, okay, God must have rocked him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I never heard this story before, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of holding back a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, really, man, because, man, we come I, – I knew about the chicks, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I remember the chicks because, you. yeah, I remember, but I don't I don't remember um, you telling me about, you know, praying that long and all that stuff, and that change actually happened there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but just man, we come, we come, man, we come from some rough stuff, bro. Like he wouldn't even, but we can make a movie, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Off of what we've been through, uh, different. Like we, my mom's from here. We lived in so many different places, man. And sometimes apart, I didn't see I, him. Man, I, I lived with someone, he lived in a dope house. I lived with my mama's friend. My other brother lived there. Like I mean, it's some man, I, bro. The only way I used to for sure see my brother, we lived in Seattle, bro, and we lived apart. He was eight or nine years old, man. And I promise, if I want to see my brother, I just got to make it to Skateland on Saturday night. I get there. He'll be there with a couple of 13, 14-year-old white chicks. He got nachos and popcorns. Like, what's up? And he cool. <laughs> and, he cool. and then I kick with my brother tonight, and I wouldn't see him for a whole nother week, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's how yeah. we, it was like, it was real. And he was surviving, and he was young, man. And he was just out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I was where I was, my brother Derek, and it's just it was just crazy, man. You talk yeah. about function. Yeah. But the Lord, man, the Lord has blessed us tremendously. Yes, yes, yes. Like you talk about the most part of dysfunction. And and yeah, man, and and like you said, Auntie spoke in our lives. My cousin, she she was she used to say, I know y'all in the streets, but if the Lord get a hold of y'all, y'all gonna be some bad boys. And I'll be like Rolling my weed, Lord, nigga, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking 20 years, 25 years ago. We, I'm just, man, and she said, when the Lord get a hold of y'all, y'all gonna be some bad boys. And I'm like, yeah, right. But I'm so we had people speaking in our lives. You know? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Man. That's dope. That's what's up. That's what's up. So Dre, you play Romans 10 9. Um, so let's let's just go ahead. I wanted, like I said, when I saw. I think as I'm as this conversation is happening, I'm hearing certain things and there's certain questions I want to ask. And so, you know, I'm kind of jumping around. So I won't really be, after that dope story. Like I really won't belabor going into what was behind these songs. So let's just go ahead and just say who we got and we can jump into this last round. Um, Chev, I start with you. Jesus says, I think I think I know where you're going after hearing that story. Right. But Jesus says, <laughs> <laughs> what you how you got? It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus says. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, Trent, Trent. But that's not, uh, just real quick, real quick. Oh, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir, go ahead. Romans 10 9 was cool, man, but I just think it was it was just a little bit too much hype when I first heard it, man. I just, it was cool to me. Like, I listen to it. Like, if I pop in the CD, it's going to be one that I listen to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I just, it was just cool to me. You know I mean? got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, what was Romans 10 and 9 on? That was a uh, Shocks compilation or? It was on Lights and Diamonds, uh, and then it was on my mixtape. Okay, so because I was I was confused how how you were able to use that song. <laughs> for, yeah. for, but see, it, but wasn't see, a, but you, it wasn't a feature. Yeah, it was, it, was on, it was on my mixtape. But also, I think there was some confusion about what what we said a feature, what it meant. Like if you meant you wanted to use somebody that featured on your track or a feature you, you featured on. You, you know did. what I mean? And so that was one of the things I did. But Dev also did say when I come. He was like, hey, if you got a mixtape, son, you use it. I was like, bet, that's on my mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I couldn't you I thought it was five original songs and two features. No, no, it was five original songs, 
two features or a, you can it can if you got two features you can do a mixtape or a feature if you got one feature you can do a mixtape or a feature I, I texted it to you okay so so he got so he got two features and a mixtape we got some discrepancy here yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying you gotta take that up with management you gotta take that up with management because <laughs> I was like Romans ten nine one right so I was like okay I give that to him but then I was like hold on that's shock song no. That's my song. <laughs> ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, That's my song. Understand? AD, hold on. AD3 has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's my That's song. Man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so, go ahead, go ahead, Trent. Go ahead, Trent. No, uh, so after hearing that story, I want to say Jesus saves because I, I felt that like all in my spirit area, you know what I'm saying? And I had to make sure my eye went leaking a couple times. However, um, bro, listen, Romans 10, the, 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 what Dre rapped on Romans 10, 9 to this day is some of the best, like one of the best verses I've heard from Dre, like period. Thanks. Like, and I, I, I remember, I remember the session engineering he came to the crib just told me don't don't preview the beat just put it on press record i did that i press record he went crazy one take no breaks murdered it stepped out the booth and said bounce it down <laughs> <laughs> yes sir no he was in my <laughs> He was in Miami. I sent him the link. I sent it to him. I said, what's what you doing? He said, I'm on vacation. My wife says, check your email. He checked his email and he called me back. And he was like, bro. he called me back. And as soon as I asked before, he was like, bro, bro. <laughs> okay, 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 cool. I said, don't you ever in your singing mind challenge me to rap again, period. In your singing mind? <laughs> no, I, no, I, ain't no, I ain't no singer that rap. I rap rap. Like, <laughs> Dang. Dang. <laughs> Yeah, again, so I got, I mean, I, I got Romans tonight. I think, like, and this this will segue into the final song, like, from a Christian hip-hop standpoint, that song, not only did it it do something within the city, but that that record itself went viral nationally. Like, you had a, a ton of Romans tonight remix beats, um, you know, a remix, a remixes to that record. So, like, I got Romans tonight getting that one just because, like I said, within the, not only within Kansas City, but nationally, everybody jumped on that record, man. Like, that mud was, I don't know if it was Rapzilla or The South, but you had several people jumping on that remix, and it ended up on those websites. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I got Romans 10-9 on that one. But, yeah, that was, I got that was Romans dope story. Yeah. Well. Say it again? I said I got Romans 10-9 as well. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Shell, that was a dope story, though, bro. I appreciate you sharing that with us, man. Yeah, well, God, man. Yes, sir. So, final song of the battle. Um, we got Holier Than Thou versus uh, Bagum. Um, so bef with this record, like, I think you kind of you kind of delved into that story, JB, on the on the battle in the battle itself. But how did this collab come to happen with you, Tech Nine, Chris Calico? Okay, so um, long story short, I'm in the barber shop. Tech come in, you know what I'm saying? He like. Man, what you doing in here? I'm like, oh, man, I just graduated barber school, man. I'm in here cutting. He used to go to a guy named Chico. Yeah, we caught up a little bit, man. And uh, I'm always, at that point, man, I'm always trying to share the gospel. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, you know, I'm on my Jesus thing, man, doing Christian hip-hop. And he's like, Christian hip? What the heck is that? I was like, say less. Hey, take this CD. Next time you come back in here, tell me what you think about it. And, and Tech, he, he'll he take your CD and listen to it, bro. He's not one of those to throw it like he likes music. You know what I'm saying? And I knew that I was going to get my truth CD back. It was the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which one was it? The truth. The first one. The first Moment one. Moment of truth. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That was a hard. Okay. But anywho, so I gave him that. He came back probably two weeks later. And he said, man, I want to work with this dude. I was like, ugh, I don't know. That can <laughs> he said, man, I'm going a, I'm to a have somebody find. I'm going to reach out to him. Man, I want to work with this dude, though, man. I was like, all right, bet. Come back. He come every two weeks. Came back two more weeks later, and uh, he was like, man, 
the people shun me, man. There's people shun me. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, man, I reached out to the truth, man. And there's people, man, man, treating me like a peasant, man. I was just like, I can't believe it, man. I was like, well, you know, usually, you know, Christians don't really work with secular artists, you know what I mean? But I just thought that maybe you had some type of pull, you know what I mean? Some weight to bring to it because you tech now, you got a song with Eminem and you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. but that, that didn't work, you know what I mean? So he's like, you know what? It wasn't meant for me to work with him because it was meant for me to work with you. And I was like, uh, shoot, I don't think I can do that, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> For where you know, because I knew the politics in that, I was like, man, that's a dangerous move. So, uh, I got with uh, my pastor, Pastor Archie, uh, shout out, man. And uh, he was like, okay, the only way that you'll be able to pull this off is if you first the song has to be it has to be on your playground, he can't bring you to his playground, you got to bring him to yours. So the song has to be glorifying the king. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, all right, okay, we can do that. I didn't at this point, I didn't even know what the song was about. Mm -hmm. I was just like, man, I'll get back with you after I talk to, you know, my uh my accountability. So got the green light and uh I came back to him. I was like, all right man, uh I'll do the song with you, bro. But if it ain't if it ain't lifting the king, man, I can't do it. And he was like I get that, I get that, but it's called holier than down. And all I all I have a question is is how do you live a holy, righteous life on the road? So that's what my first verse is about. And then uh Chris Calico, he chimes in and then I want you to give us the answer in the end. I was like, Psh, easy. You know what I mean? So uh go to the studio, man. Um uh, bang that thing out with him. Uh, just a more about the just uh, where he his stance was with Jesus, man, and he he told me a whole bunch of stories, man, about like all his tattoos that really come from from the Bible, like you know sacrifice and redemption and all of this stuff. He like, man, I believe in Jesus, bro. I believe in. And my mother, he says, my mother always told me uh, that I would end up being a a, a gospel rapper or, a, or something like that. But I was like, nah, I can never do that. But for the fact that I used to come with so much word, you know what I mean? And Chris Calico coming from the church too. Like, man, this dude here be in his word. Like, he's in his word. We on tour. And he's in the back. You find him in the back in his word. He said, man, they got in a car, in a car uh, the, the tour bus flipped. They thought they was done, right? Mm -hmm. So he stumbles out of this mug and he's looking for tech. And Tech is on his knees looking at the sky like this. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, man, so you, I, I learned something different about this dude. And I was, I'm just like, man, I'm trying to give you Jesus. And here you already know who he is. You know what I mean? Now, the way he's living his life, you know, I, I have no, hey, we can't, we don't have a heaven or a hell to put someone in. So, but from what I gathered from him behind closed doors for people that know him, man, he and his word, man, he prays and all of this good stuff. So I got to know some of that. And he got to know how to live a holy and righteous life on the road from my verse. That's what's up. That's what's up. Which is only through the Holy Spirit, man. Only, the Holy Spirit gets all the credit, man. We can't do nothing by ourselves. We can't do nothing by ourselves. On our best day, we fail apart from the Holy Spirit. So he, he got it. He got it. I think it was too much Jesus in it, though. And that's why it didn't make it on his album, but it did make it on mine. Cause I think it, it, <laughs> yeah, well, cause I think I think he felt the way about it. I feel yeah, well, he gave me a shout out in it. And even though the people didn't, you know, didn't want him to do it, he did it anyway. God bless you, bro. You know, he said that all on his album. I was like, man, you should have put the verse on there. <laughs> so, uh, so I appreciate the shout out, but the verse, the verse would have been a better look. You know? right, right, right. I think the people in his camp was like, "Man, there's no way we can we can do this." Who's on the verse on this? Who's your audience? You lose, okay. huh? Who's on the verse on his album? There's nobody on there. He just he has he, his saying. He just really giving. He's bigging me up. You know what I mean? Oh, and so is the song on his album? The song is on his album. But during that verse, that part, oh, he's okay. saying, got you. Got you. he, he kind of shaved the truth a little bit, and then he ups the blast. Oh, there wasn't no kind to it. What? He was so he was so furious about that that he like, man, this the only way I can do it, and it had to go where my verse was. 
<laughs> I was like, dang, that's messed up. But knowing the people that he's around and his audience, I think he would have lost in it. And at the end of the day, it's business for him. You know what I mean? And he chose business over, you know, something that I, you know, I can't knock him for. Let me say that. I can't knock him for. But I was mad. I was mad. You wasted my time, bro. You know what I mean? I did all of this stuff. I, I left the, the shop early on a Saturday. I had money that I could have been getting. And you had me, you know what I mean? Oh, me, man. But so, Holier Than Thou 2 is coming. And he's going he's gonna to bless that one, man. And we're going to make it right. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So, Dre, you counted with Bagum. Uh, what do you think? What, did, what are your thoughts in, in playing Bagum as your final song? I knew he would play to uh play that Tech Nine song. I knew it was coming last. I knew it was gonna be his, his big joint. I knew he had it in the tuck. And so uh I wanted to just play off of the theme of, you know, the um If he dies, you know, he, dies. If he dies. He dies. Which is why I put the whole little I put I took the little clip from Rocky, put it in there and all that, and made it jazz. That, that was dope, by the way. That was really Thank good. You, I didn't catch that at first. I caught it the second time when I listened to it. I was like, dang, that's I mean, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, I put that in there, and I wanted I had a uh, I wanted to get a one's verse on there because I knew like he smoked that joint, like he did. And I had cut him off on the uh, on the uh, I'm good remix, and on Romans ten nine part two because he raps after me on Romans ten nine part two, and so I uh, I cut him off and I was like I'm saving that for the for the end because I knew I was gonna play the whole thing. That's why on, on the thing I said, well, I'm gonna need my brother to come help me put you in this bag because. You've been eating pretty good. I might not be able to lift you myself. <laughs> so I'm gonna call my man to come along with me. Use my last speaker. We're gonna play Batman. You know what I mean? So it's like a perfect song to end off the end off the, the theme of the show and everything like that. So and that song is phenomenal. Crazy. I I believe I have the weakest verse on the song. Like I think Stoss has the first the, has the best verse. A ones is a real close, but it's a close second. And I think 83 had a better verse than me on that song. Hmm. I agree with you on that. You, you did get bagged on your own song. It wasn't my song. It was 83 song. Yeah, 83. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was 83. That show. So you got four features? Three features? No, nope, I, <laughs> I had I had two songs. See this back back to our understanding of what a feature was. How we gonna do features? Because we was only doing one or, or one verse. I said, well, let me play some songs I featured on. I said, but I got two two features. I'm gonna play. I play. Two features. I played two songs I featured on, but I also had, only had two features. So that's it. Gotta read the fine print, Blast. Gotta yep. read the fine print. That's why, that's why I called them to make sure. I'm like, 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 Hey, so, so nobody, nobody's followed the rules since we started. So, so, I, win, so I win off technicality alone. You know. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's, 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 let's score this last with Dev. We we'll start with you. How you call this last round, man? Oh yeah, of course, blast the blast, nothing but the blast, boy. All right, Trent. So 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 I'm about to do my best uh, politician impression, and I'm a flip flop because I have bag I had Bagum heavy because Bagum is crazy. But then, am I, as I'm thinking about it, is J Blast, Tech Nine, and Chris Calico, and a choir. Don't forget the choir and a and a choir. And a choir. We, and Chris Calico is crazy. Yeah, they smoke crazy. And 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 to to even pull off like if we're gonna give like we have to be consistent across the board. I gotta be consistent because I'm giving Chris Lee credit for being on Reach Record stuff and winning a Stellar and a Grammy. If you pull off getting a fe a Tech Nine feature, that gotta carry some weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him. Holier than thou, even though I'm probably gonna play Bagum more than I play Holier than thou. But I mean that that feature is it's it's a great feature. Like it's a it's a great song for a battle. It's a great song for a battle. Yeah. So so uh, I'm a, I'm gonna give him that one. 
I, I'm going to jump in. So the day of, I said, I'm giving Blast that final song. And Trent, he rebuked me. He scolded me. <laughs> stop, stop trying to be humble. Stop trying to be humble. You know your first fire on that record. You know you won that. You you know Dre got that round. I said, bro, no, listen. I said, it's Tech. It's Chris. JB smashes his verse. I said, when that, when that record came out, that was a huge look for the culture. It was a huge look for Kansas City Christian hip hop. I'm like, I obviously, I love what I did on Bagum. I love the song, but I can't deny uh, the moment that was, yo, Tech Nine, like greatest Christian rapper in Kansas City history. I don't I don't think I don't think is, is that up for debate? Did I say Christian? Greatest rapper. Christian. I was like, huh? My bad, my bad, my bad. I caught it. Greatest rapper in Kansas City history. Like is is that is that Blast is giving me a look. So I don't I don't I, I'm not from here so who the greatest rap artist in Kansas greatest, City. Okay, okay. So, total package. Yeah. So yeah. Real quick, real quick, we're not going too deep because I'm not, I'm not up on Kansas City rap scene. Like I I wasn't the biggest rap guy growing up, and when I moved to Kansas City when I was ten. So if who would you say for you guys who grew up in the scene, greatest rapper from Kansas City? Period. So I mean, are you saying just rapper as far as just the, the ability, rap? ability, yeah, skill? Wow, tech. Okay, okay, it's, it's, okay. So, so my statement is right there. My statement is right. He's the greatest. Greatest rapper from Kansas City. Yes. Like, he's number one. First Battle Hall of Fame in Mount Rushmore. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, for me, like, when I look at that, look at all those factors, and it's a fire song, it's a dope song, I had to go with JB. Over myself. Okay. So. Which, which I, I, because at the time, I was like, you being humble, you trying to be fake humble, you know you murdered that verse, you know what I'm saying? And I was going with Bagham at the time, but I had to sit back, you know, relax, Take a deep breath and realize, come on, man. It's, I mean, come on, man. Like, I love the song, but come on. <laughs> so JB, obviously, I don't care if JB would, if I was JB and I was just cutting back, cutting hair in the background. I'm counting that as my song. <laughs> <laughs> but but he did play new chick, huh? You did so, play. So hold on, let's get into that. Let's get into that. Let's, let's go ahead and roll. I Let's wrap it up. Know. I was uh, trying to do what Dev was telling me to do, which was five Dre original songs <laughs> and two features Dre. Two, because I, I got I got a song with uh with Shop. I would have played that. You should have. That one. I all, didn't know because hey, I was going hey, off of the rule. Hey. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be disqualified for not. Going by the rules. Yeah, you don't want to run your race and be disqualified. Yeah. I understand. Do this, do this, Dad. Just give people a number of songs and let them rock. Don't put the rest of the rules in there. That's you not fair. Nobody it, follows because, the rules. And the reason I say that is because that's the rules in the original verses battle. Well, but this ain't, yeah, this ain't we're not original. No, this ain't original. Here's the problem with that. So we had we went back and forth way before the first battle because Pastor 83 would have thought it was unfair. Because Chris wrote and produced and did a whole bunch of stuff for a whole bunch of artists, and Pastor Eighty Three hadn't done none, so I had to lay down. I ha it had to be a rule. It had to be a rule. You know well, what I'm saying? Because Chris Lee probably, probably, probably would have won. Because if, if I was JB, I'd have been like, "Yo, I'd have been like, yo, I produced this for her planet." <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should rename it. I'm playing it. You maybe know I should rename it and not be, uh, you know, uh, features or mixtapes. You got five original or four original and three wild card. You know what I'm saying? Something like that or something. I like that. You know, I like whatever that. you want to do, I like that. You involved. I like that. I like that. I mean, because quiet is kept. I did the new chick. I did the hook. And I did her verses too. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nah, yeah, right. I'm lying like a bug. Dog, and also, also hey, for Blast, me, I don't edit. Me, Blast, I don't edit stuff out, Blast. Edit. <laughs> nah, she writes all her stuff, man. Now I do tell her, hey, you know you can do better than that, and she be like, all right, you should go. She come back, and I be like, oh my god. Nah, I'm just saying, she probably gonna punch you when she when she hear I wrote her stuff too. Nah, she just gonna laugh. <laughs> she gonna laugh. <laughs> Everybody think that 
that, you know, even when she was in the world that people wrote her stuff and she's always, she's been writing, she's been rapping even before I, you know what I mean? She was rapping at 11, I believe. So she got a mm. few years on me. So she's been doing it. a completely and, different style than you. It wouldn't even, it, it don't even sound yeah. like it. Nah, hey, JB, not. JB, yeah. did, did yeah. dead people even come on your radar? Dead people did, but I didn't want to jump him. I didn't, I, I tried oh. to keep it as much yeah. as. Jump you know, that man. I don't, I don't agree I with you. that one. I, 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 that one. I, I had a problem with, I just had a problem. I don't want to win with other people. You know what I mean? I just didn't want to Why? do Why? You did the work. Huh? You, I don't, you did the work. It's your I work. I did the work. I did the work, but I just it's didn't the same thing. It's the same thing that we told, we was telling uh, AD3, like, and the battles, like, dude, pull out all the stops. Go for it. This is a this is a showcase of you as an artist. You know what I mean? So if you wrote something, like, do it. Put it on there. I can't I can't say that you didn't tell me that. You told me. I did. I did. I did. I did. And yeah. I just felt like if I win, it's gonna be like um, I don't know, uh LeBron. Well, well, he had D Wade. And, you know what I mean? No, 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 nobody's gonna oh, take that. Oh, nobody, nobody. Oh, We've been like, yo. So, so let let's let's do this to recap because I agree. Okay. I told Chef. I said I wanted to hear. Um, I'm ready. Um, I wanted to hear. Do what I, I do. Think about that. I wanted to hear. Do what I do. And for me, so I have it five two Dre, but I think it's a close battle. And I think if you. Add some if you add new chick, if you add dead people, if you add um do what I do, I'm ready. I think for me, me personally, I can't speak for anybody else. Mm -hmm. I might go, yo, blast edge this. Mm -hmm. Right? Like cause you're you're only you're only two songs away. I you got the first and the last. You play any of those other songs for me, I'm like, yo, I think Blast got this one. Um uh, so yeah, so and that's what's the fascinating part about this though, series, whether or not you want to talk about whether you score or whether you want to say who won what and this, that, and the other. It's always fascinating to hear the the ideology and the thought process was behind who chooses what song, who does what. So it's always a good time, man. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I like I like the post game because it's interesting to see like the ideas and just to hear like people's like mindset behind different things. You know, say ever listen, everybody makes mistakes. You should have played new chick. It's okay. I forgive you. I still love you as a brother. You know what I'm saying? I just it's never okay. thought about. We, it. I just we never know for about next that. time. We yeah. know for next time. I did time. think it's about okay. um I did think about uh I'm ready. So it was I'm ready. So my brother like, man, you ain't seen it. I was like, I'm struggling with these this song. Jesus saves, I'm ready, my king, right? My king, I eliminated, even though that's probably my favorite song that me and my wife has, uh, just because the back, you know, what the backstory of it, but the the engineering just sucked, man. I just was like, God, this don't sound good. So I just couldn't use none of that up against what this guy's coming with, an album, disc makers, you know what I'm saying? They put that, you know, that glass master on there, you know what I mean? Freaking yeah. top spin and, you know what I mean? Like, show. <laughs> uh, I, it, you know, that matters to mm -hmm. me. That matters, the quality of the music, not necessarily the song, but the quality of the song and all that. So took out my king. But then I'm ready, Jesus saves. Ah, which one? And just Jesus saves is just more impactful for me than I'm ready. So that's why I went with Jesus saves instead of I'm ready. But I did think of I'm ready. Love so real quick, Dre, give us, before we kind of go around the room, give everybody's final score and we shut things down for the night. What didn't make your list that you almost put on? Um, phenomenal. Didn't get played. Uh uh, it was a few things. Off. Uh, uh, Devoted didn't get played. Um, I had Can't Stop Now um, off of Shock Joint was one of my features I might have thought about doing. For nostalgia reasons, I, I had I Am Not on the list. Um, that could have went could have went off. Um, I would have I wanted you to play Count of Three, but that's just me. Count of Three was on there too. Was was on there of uh songs that could have went, but that. Everything from that first album, I feel like what JB just said. Like I don't like the I don't like the production on there. I did the production myself on most of that, and it was trash. But I was working with what I had. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bars was dope. Uh, so I was the opposite of JB. I didn't need to give. Did nobody get? I didn't need to give my keyboard away. I didn't need nobody give you one. <laughs> Hilarious. 
Here, you take this. You take this this Triton 3000. Uh, <laughs> but, Let's go around the room. How we scored? Dev, how do you score? Final score? 4-3 Blast. 4-3 Blast, Trent? I had it 5-2. I got Jay Blast the first in the – the first in the uh, the, the seven. Last, last, he, he could have uh, left last, but he should have played new chick. Okay, Trent, we got it. We got it. Blast, how you scored? I got 4-3 me. All right, Dre. Or – hold on, can I say this? 4-3 yeah. me or – Four three Dre because like I said it could be flipped it could be yes. flipped either one of them songs in the middle Dre I, I had five two I had five two all right dope dope but you Sorry. had but you had me what Dre the first the first or last I had you in the first and last Nah you told me on the phone I had you six no, I said I said I said six more I said, I said, more. I said, I said what maybe five two because that last round like it's taking it's taking what's his name like I like I like Romans ten nine more but. I can't. I can't beat Tech. <laughs> I can't beat Tech. Chris Calico at a at a. <laughs> you talking about Bagum? Yeah, Bagum, Bagum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love. Okay, I love. Right. I love Bagum. Like that's my joint. But yeah, for sure. Okay, Five right. so, so before we get out of here, man, I want to give uh, I guess a, a chance to plug. Dev, I'm gonna start with you, man. Plug. Uh, let's plug the radio station. Plug the plug the battles and things of that nature, man. So floor is yours. I mean, always, man. Uh, ConcreteTruthMedia.com. Uh, praise95fm.com um, Me and wifey did our podcast Married to Media on the uh, Concrete Truth um, uh, YouTube so check that out and we, we got a lot of good content up on the YouTube and then on the Praise 95 YouTube check out our travels check out the battles um, yeah so um, man I appreciate uh, you know allowing us to come on here and, and and give our thoughts and everything. Artists uh, always send music. Praise nine five fm at gmail dot com. All right, all right, blast. So you are a barber, so I give you a chance to plug plug the shop, man. Have people come through now that that is now allowed um, in the Kansas City metro area. First, I want to say, man, hey. Man, we are essential out here, bro. He's, bro, let, man, there are people walking, there were people walking around, bro, looking so crazy. They were scaring people. You know like, what I mean? Let's listen, try. listen. Before I got my hair cut, I looked myself in the mirror. So my wife, he's, she's good with like some, you know, it's like some trimmers. So she'll take care of my beard and line and stuff. I looked in the mirror. I said, bro, I look homeless. <laughs> like, I look homeless. Like, I look terrible. I looked awful. So, yes. Yes, you did. Barbers, Nail techs, uh, hairdressers, essential. So when you going to get that? Haircut? When you going to get the haircut? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I should kick you off here right now. With that being said, man, you know, uh, turning heads, barber salon, Blue Springs. Uh, holler at the kid, man. Just had my 11 year anniversary. I wanted to do something real big, but doing the uh, quarantine uh, and all that, it couldn't happen. But it's cool, man. Um, I, I'm, I'm blessed, man, and, and honored just to be able to, to say I've owned a business, man, for this long. I can take care of my family, man. And I play a lot of y'all music there, uh, depending on who comes in. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got something for you. And then I play this, and then the hard dude come in, braised, gold. I'm like, oh, Thizzle, I got something for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm be real strategic in what I play and how I play it just depending on who's coming in the shop. So it's definitely a lighthouse first. And then I just happen to cut hair there. You know what I mean? So oh, um, like that. Lifeline like that. Music KC, man, is being resurrected. You know, lifelinemusickc.com. I'm going to put some some new stuff up there as well as some old stuff. Los, I still got you on that uh, From Street to the Church joint. Uh, we got a new album coming. I'm bringing Lady C out. I say, hey, we got this one last ride because you know Lady C, man, she was like, I, she felt some type of way about the uh, the the CHH uh, CHH scene, and she's just like, man, it doesn't, it, it ruffles my feathers and it doesn't make me feel good. So I'm I'm really gonna back out of this thing. I was just like, come on, you can't do that because people still need to hear what you gotta say. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're gonna miss out based based on what you your feelings like and satan will use that he will use that against you so that you won't get 
uh, you know, the gospel out to people who really need it because he's a hater like that. You know what I mean? So she she came to grips was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. And she's been through a whole lot since since she put down the mic. So she has a lot to say. Um, it's called Recalculating, the album called Recalculating, because uh, we've been going somewhere and the navigation has just been like, recalculating, recalculating. Like, where are you going? You need to turn around and go... So that that that's look look out for that man and uh yeah that's about it but Trent you need to uh, come get your hair cut man take that stuff off Reggie man you play too much man <laughs> you go too far with the jokes man <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> take that off your head Reggie no shoot no yo yo fellas uh, Chev JB I definitely appreciate you guys coming on and hanging spending some time with us man. Listen to those who will watch this. I get it's lengthy, but I promise I'm probably gonna put it. I'm probably gonna do a video before I drop it. Like, look, we went long, but I promise you, it's worth it. It's a lot of good stuff in here. Some dope stories. Hey, um, let me, let me yeah. say one more thing before you jump out. Yep. To um, just being rock solid. We didn't just skip y'all because we didn't like y'all battle. Like we never, <laughs> we didn't intend to keep this as a series. Like as as, as it has gone. Uh, we didn't do a review of y'all stuff because for me personally, that was my first time hearing uh, some of Rock Solid's music. I love I love what I heard, uh, but I knew a little bit more about Just Be, so I couldn't listen to it and give it an a unbiased un opinion because I just wasn't familiar with your music. And so um, I'm going to get familiar with y'all stuff. One thing I would say, y'all y'all both have dope music. We love y'all. We respect y'all. We don't want y'all to feel like we just left y'all out here. Like <laughs> we, we, we acknowledge y'all. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Dev, thank you for continuing to do this, man. We're going to keep Keep them going, man, and um, yeah, just keep keep them coming, man. It's, it's a good thing to go down memory lane to hear a bunch of people's music, to get get familiar with people's music for the first time, like myself. And so, um, I enjoyed it, man. I enjoy it, and um, I'm looking forward to whatever's coming coming in the future. That's what's K our boy coming soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coming up. Yeah, we already got a date for that. So we already got a date. Uh, shock shock music versus KCR. Um. We going, it's going to be the long haul. I think Are they putting us against each other, Trent? They putting us against so. Los today. I think it's going to be 15, 12 to 15 tracks. So. 15. Listen, listen, Shock is having a hard time getting down to 15. We having a hard time getting to 15. Oh <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we, had a, we had a run. We didn't, even put out, we didn't put out nowhere near as much music as Shock. Like, Shock got music music. He got a gang of bags but, to get into. We got like a four year but, window and about seven records. <laughs> but this is a battle that I'm looking forward to. This this should be an enjoyable battle. It's all love both both ways. And listen, the outcome gonna be the outcome. You know what I'm saying? It, it's gonna be what it is. However, yeah. this is gonna be that comment crazy. section is gonna be crazy. I'm telling y'all that. And that one is that was gonna be crazy. It's gonna be wild. <laughs> hey, and I'm gonna be in that mug. I'm just gonna be hating. I am too. I ain't like I ain't like that, but like you said, man, Shock got a lot of material. It, it, it's almost not fair, but it is what it is. Uh, Relax. Appreciate you guys Relax. for having me, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Solid dudes, man. And I, I hate that y'all took offense. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 hate, I hate that that happened. But now, after having this. I understand why, because it's the backgrounds. It's the backgrounds. You know what I'm saying? If this is what I came up listening to, and this is I'm not so familiar with, of course this is what it's going to be. You know what I mean? So it's not actually a bias standpoint. It's really just what I rock with and what I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, listen, man, I think, you know, it is what it is on that standpoint. I think it's just, like you said, it's perspectives. Um, you know, sometimes misunderstandings and we're all adults. We're all grown men. We we talk to each other. We clear things, clear the air. Like I said, I'm happy to have y'all, man. This is, like I said, I appreciate what you do, Blast. appreciate what Lifeline brings. Obviously, Dev, you know, we've worked together in the past, um, both on 90, Praise 95 and then on the talk radio side. So um, we have a relationship. It's all good. It's all love. We all family, man. We're going to keep this thing rocking. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but I, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I'm, well, so what I was going to say is that, you know, for Dre, for for uh, Jay Blast, Lady C, listen, y'all go check their music out. Like I said, I've been between Spotify, Apple Music, listening to stuff all day. I'm a cop on Apple. 
I know I should go to the website and cop directly, but I'm an Apple head. You know, I got sauce records. I don't bought a band camp, still not in my library just because it's not Apple. So I try to buy as much as I can. Uh, support, support local artists, man. Yeah. Buy their music, stream their music. If you like what you hear, every time we do on these recaps, I'm going to stress that. Support these guys in any way that you can, man. So, yo, I appreciate the time. I appreciate everybody coming on. Oh, okay. I was like, Trent, did you say something? All right. I appreciate everybody coming on. Um, in the absence of my homie, I am AWAR.com for everything AWAR related. New battle just dropped two on two. Those are versus uh, B Dot and Gucci Gotti. Uh, I appreciate y'all for being on. <laughs> Until next time, it's been a black and, and light and light team. We appreciate y'all, man. College y'all. Stay connected to the power source. You can catch, catch us. Reppin' Jesus, he is our Lord. He's the very theme of everything that I record. He's the king of kings that every